Hello and welcome to DCP Live episode number 161. Exciting, Hello. exciting. Hello and welcome, yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How's it going, Chevy? Hey. Oh, it's going great. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Welcome back excited. to the show, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to be back. It's been just over a year. It has, actually. right? Yeah, just over a year. Yeah, yeah. it was last October. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. I like how you're flexing your Funko Pop collection for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's impressive. Took me, yeah. yeah. Took me I'm jealous of Atheon. I've wanted yeah. an Atheon to put in my computer to hold up my graphics card. That'd be nice. I want to make the Vault of Glass computer, basically. That would be amazing. <laughs> Briar, that sounds right? amazing, and I hope you do it. I'm going to be very sad if you don't actually achieve that dream. Because you've officially... I'm adopting your dream at this point. All right. That sounds awesome. How's it going, guys? Good. Excited. A lot going on. Yeah. Is that busy? Too busy for gaming. Yeah? Or was uh, that the grumblings of Iron Banner? <laughs> there was some Iron Banner. Yeah. I did play Iron it. Grumble. Yeah. Your banner was happening. Yes. Um, yes. I finished my bounty. That That's the important thing. Did you? Yes. It's not that bad this time. I, I didn't mind it. Yeah. I think it's better than it has been in previous years, months. Why is that? Months. How so? It just seems slightly less frustrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so. that's good. I'd say for me, <laughs> the artifact made it a lot easier to do the abilities one. Mm. Um, like the abilities and super kills, the artifact is you can get some pretty crazy builds with that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've uh, they've affected how PvP has been, and some people are pro that, and other people are against that, saying that shouldn't be affecting things and making uh, people having one hit I'm melees. You know, I'm I'm against that. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a little bit too strong. A little much, right? Or, or yeah. one, those one shot grenades. I'm telling you, so and Iron Banner came charges. around, handheld supernova. They were like, Yeah, obviously I'm gonna do that. It's gonna get me my ability kills. Right. And now people realize that they can run a hundred discipline and have their grenade up every two seconds and have massive damage reduction. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I, thing is now Watts, it's everywhere. Thing is, Watts, it's balanced because all you have to do is kind of look at the person with your nade, you know? <laughs> and like you have to be yeah. basically double the length of a shotgun, you get the kill. So that's pretty balanced, right? Pretty balanced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think throw in the general area, the grenade will do the work for you. Exactly. Yeah. Like you throw it on B point, happens to get a double kill. It's like you're you earned it, man. You're a warlock. Congratulations. You know? <laughs> I still don't think it's as bad as the the bottom tree striker with uh thunder coil. Yeah. That's oh, all you thunder have to do coil. is punch. Oh, dear Lord. All you have to do is punch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that is rough. Yeah. Uh, so Iron Banner's going good then, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How'd we go yeah. from yeah, everything's great to yeah, things are ragging on all that. Iron Banner, things are fine. It's fantastic, honestly. Dare I say it was a little fun though? What? <laughs> See, for me, <laughs> I always have bit. fun playing Crucible. Initially, it's like it's my grind time. When it comes to right. how long I can stay in a playlist and actually grind it. Those are the things that start affecting it, like the handheld supernovas, the bottom right. tree strikers, you know, like those those things add up over time. Things that start tickling your pickle. Exactly. And then your pickle gets tickled. Then it Wait, submits I thought a report. Your was a <laughs> Until it submits a report to the anger justice department about uh, why absolutely. things are happening. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So Chevy, it's been a year, man. How? Well, um, what, yeah. what? What's happened, man? What's happened in a year? G give us the uh, recap. A lot of, a lot of video gaming. <laughs> yeah, a lot of video gaming. Let's see. Um, You've been playing a lot of uh, Red Dead and like Final Fantasy. I've been playing a lot of <laughs> not Red Dead and not Final Fantasy. Um, Did pretty you play much Borderlands? Only Destiny. No, actually. No Borderlands. Only Destiny. Yeah, crazy enough. Some hardcore. Um, I never, I never felt like I couldn't or didn't want to play destiny for whatever reason it just feels too good to me i just enjoy it too much um it's and really i can always game find game. things to do right mm, like yeah. you, know, like, you mm -hmm. know we like to do the challenges and we like to do the low mans and you know we just make up our own stuff and that, do you that have like makes... a list of achievements over the last year that you and your clan have kind of <laughs> a list no could we make <laughs> one it would be quite long but yeah um, <laughs> do it. We, we've done a lot of things in that man uh, i mean we could but i don't know Maybe if we like end up making a website and just have like a list of achievements, Hell it'd yeah. be quite long. Uh, I mean, even just GOS alone, we did so much. We did the three man flawless. We did the two man hunter, the two man two phase, three man one phase. Uh, 
there's so many different challenges like we just we just do stuff what's been your favorite challenge to date so far up to now favorite challenge to date i thoroughly enjoyed doing two mad dogs just running around just like running around from the pooches and avoiding that was so much fun um i mean solo argos the original runs yeah. were always a lot of fun because it, it's like it's all on you and i really enjoyed that um two man gal run is is a lot of fun as well it's very chaotic very hectic mm -hmm. but it, it's it's fun i like the stuff that like it, it pushes you to to be better and uh the more difficult content that's the stuff that i like typically when, um, don't when, like flawless not not a fan of flawless mm. Mm. when you guys are figuring something out like right. uh two man and the dogs mm -hmm. like how long do you guys usually spend trying to figure out a strategy that works and like are there points of frustration in there or are you mm -hmm. pretty much just like you yeah. you know what you're in for so you're, you're kind of mentally prepared for it yeah uh, i mean definitely some challenges are a lot more difficult they're a lot more grindy um but Typically what we do is we come up with a general strat, we test it and we say, okay, is, is this a viable strat? Yes, it is. Okay. Let's keep it going. No, it's not. Okay. What do we have to tweak to make it better or to execute what we need to essentially? Um, Process and of elimination. Yeah, pretty much. We'll, we'll try something. Okay. This isn't working. Let's try something else. Like, um, damage checks are usually the biggest things, right? You know, we try mm -hmm. a specific yeah. weapon. Okay, this is not working. We try another weapon. This will work. However, this is going to screw over ad clear. So how can we compensate for that? Um, so it's a lot of trial and error and just uh, trying random stuff. Um, and there's definitely a lot of frustration sometimes, especially when you get on a longer grind. Um, mental mistakes are inevitable. Um, uh, you guys know that Glad's typically my two-man partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets very hard on himself if he ever does a mental mistake and I'm the same way. It's bound to happen, though. Um, and then we always have each other to kind of pick each other back up and make sure that, yo, it's okay, dude, it happens. Let's, uh, let's run it back and do this. Is when the road. you say mental mistakes, like expand on that a little bit. Like, what? what yeah, is we that? can't really relate with this. So, like, give an example. It happens in literally everything. You have a role, you have a job. It could be in a general raid, right? Um, in any any job you have and you forget to do it. Right. Let's say you have to uh, prestige Leviathan. Your job is to shoot the top arrow and you forget to shoot the top arrow or you forget to shoot the scion. Right. That's a yeah. mental mistake. Hey, I should be shooting this thing, but I forgot. Right. Good thing you have a partner or a teammate to help you. Um, but in a two man, you don't have that. Right. right. So a mental mistake would be um, pulling too early on Garden of Salvation. Right. If uh, if I don't say pull left and he accidentally shoots and he pulls me before I have 10. That's that's a little bit of a headache because now we have to go in again and it's throwing the entire rhythm off. Right. Um, or forget to shoot a cyclops. <laughs> right. That that happened a lot on our day one. Um, if you forget to shoot a cyclops, we all know that those cyclopses are pretty nutty. Yeah, so, yeah. guardian down. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Day one during the uh, contest, those cyclops were a one shot kill. Yeah. Psychos. Oh man. yeah. Yeah, 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 they were. I mean, they still are. Actually, they still are. If they they direct impact you, even at seven fifty plus light. Or power, um, they'll still want to hit you. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta so. know, Chevy. Are, yeah. How do you feel about building? Yeah, bobbin. Like this building? is very... <laughs> that's the hot bobbin, question. Oh, dude, I love the bobbin. Bobbin's a lot of fun. Uh, we call it bobbin, bobbin. builder. Yeah, bobbin, bob the builder. Uh, bob the builder. Yeah. Do you yeah, so we call exclusively it build whenever one. you do that? No, I don't. Um, Why is that? I like to when I do like full fire team runs. Now I try to make it chaotic because it makes it more fun. Um, hmm. I feel like more fun. After more like, fun. Yeah. What what does more fun mean to you when more you're fun. at the end I of Garden like, Salvation? I feel like once you like get a strat down for a specific raid, the encounters get very dull and they're very repetitive. And it's just okay, send two people and okay, take them out. Two more people going. Okay, now two going right. It's like it's just very straightforward, very easy, really. Um, you know, going from a two man to a six man, uh, it would be quite a bit easier, right? Um, so I like okay. to, okay, two people going left. All right, I'm going in right. And then I'll just, you know, shoot right. And then, okay, somebody come bob with me. And I just try to make it chaotic. Um, it just <laughs> makes it more fun, more enjoyable for me. Mm. Um, but bobbing, bobbing's a lot of fun. I enjoy that. How do you feel about no on, building at all? Yeah, like on this normal <laughs> six-person team, how do mm -hmm. you feel? Like there's usually, I've seen a lot of the strat is, okay, you two are building the entire time. Right. And then there's a strat, which we employed <laughs> the own contest, which is just stop building. No need. How do you feel about it? 
Yeah. Uh, contest, you need a build for sure. Um, because you're so tall, ah, you're so you low. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to. Yeah, you, you do, Briar. To. Finish the read a little bit better. Let him finish. We never finished on contest. How that's true. Yeah. So, so I will oh, say yeah, you don't true. have to, right? Um, but it would make it much easier if you did build because you actually have places to be safe, especially yeah. being twenty under power level. You know, jumping on the, the vex milk. For contest specifically, yes. yes. Uh, jumping on the vex milk like that—that that stuff hurts. And then you have so to. So if you gotta ads, be good. Then, you need to build because things hurt. So yeah. to get good, especially you when you're build. outside all the time, is building. If it's contest, yeah. If it's yes. not contest, oh, yeah. though, I mean, it's kind of easy mode, right? If you build, wait, right? let him answer. <laughs> you're trying to influence. I'm, his just, I'm just saying. I'm pointing out the obvious, right? So, so I'll say this. Um, so of course, uh, Glad fired up stream one day, and I was gonna take the day off, and he's like, "Yo, we we're gonna do, we we're gonna do a no comps because everybody wanted to see a two man no comps, uh, sanctified mind kill," and I was just like, oh, "I was gonna take the day off because we've been grinding, and tomorrow's reset, blah blah blah," and he's like, "Come on," I was like, "All right, whatever." So we just hopped in there, two man no comps, it wasn't in Discord, didn't do anything, and we did two man no comps, sanctified mind, um, and we did it on the first try, and that's because we have a lot of experience. So then the chat's like, that was too easy. You guys can't do this. You can't do that. No bobbin, no this, no that. And we're like, what the heck? And you guys have to do a two phase. We're like, what the heck? All right. So we did two man, uh, two phase, no building, um, no emoting to, you know, signal being pulled or um, anything like that. And it was a little bit more difficult, but once you're power level, it, it doesn't hurt you that much. It, it tickles more than it hurts. Yep. Um, as long as you're jumping in the correct areas, don't just stand in it, obviously. Yeah. Like, as long there's as a you're lot not, of safe spots you can sit in. As long but... as you're not space bar adverse, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> also, warlocks. So, I mean, warlocks, you have healing rifts. You have a well if you really need to. Yep. Uh, you have a healing grenade. So, I mean, you have a lot of ways to survive. Um, and he was on a titan, so he basically just lying rampant everywhere. Interesting. So, so you're saying that never of, touch the floor. of all guardians, warlocks should be the most comfortable with no building. Uh, yeah, huh. yeah, this is I fascinating, so. man. Sure, was, uh, not in contest. The best. Fascinating. No, contest is over, Fran. That will only happen for 24 hours, so I'm not against yeah. not building at this point. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Shelly, would you like to see contest come back for like the rest of the season so you could continue to be in it? Like, obviously, yes. you know, maybe there's no reward for doing it, maybe they give you an mm -hmm. emblem if you finish in contest rules. That's different from the one that you get for doing it in the first 24 hours. But would you like to see it like come back? Yes. Um, I would like to see a, a contest mode, a normal mode, and then, dare I say, a hard mode. Mm. That would be, be kind of cool. I mean, yeah. that might be a little bit much. But yeah. um, I, I definitely think contest mode is, is a lot of fun. And once we get power level, one of my big issues with this game is once you reach power, everything is way too easy. Like, things just fall over. Mm. Um, and 980 Nightfall is a prime example where under level is actually difficult. Everything else, pretty much it all just falls over and dies, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so being under level, especially with the artifact, we can't get under level now. Um, me and Glad were talking about this. We're like, yo, how can we get to you know 920 power to see if we can try a two-man contest? Well, you can't flip it off, right? Like, can't, can't really do that because now we have the mm -hmm. artifact, and yeah. you know, let's say we do get under power level. Well, then we level up. Okay, now we might be over power. Um, so it would be cool to have that active. Um, I think it'd even be cool to throw it in the triumphs. Um, complete a complete a contest modifier raid. Mm -hmm. You know, people people like the more difficult stuff and just gotta give them an, a reason to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah, something that's fun. already in the game too, so it's mm -hmm. you know, seems like an easy win. Yeah. Seemingly, um, yeah. I wouldn't want to yeah. see like a nightfall card though. I know that's been brought up before. I wouldn't really want to see a nightfall card. Um, like the Five of Swords card, I think it's called, mm -hmm. where you can throw on Blackout and throw on Grounded and things like that. Um, I would like to see an actual, this is a contest modifier. Your power will be reduced down to 920 power level for the final encounter, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Um, so you don't have to do anything on your own. Um, I think that would be, be kind of cool. So outside of like a Triumph, how do you feel they could reward you on top of getting it working, you know? Like, what would incentivize you outside of it being you, Chevy, and Clan Redeem, who wants so to I guess, do those? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess the big thing is uh, replayability is essentially what you're talking about, right? Um, yeah, I mean, why, what's why my incentive? I, you know, why would I keep playing it? Yeah, right? rewards. Yeah. Like, 
What does that yeah, look like? So, yeah, why bother with um, contest if it's so? There's definitely a big rough patch when it comes to um, activities to farm the the materials for infusion. So that could be right. something. Mm -hmm. So uh, the golf balls, yes. right? The the golf clubs, right? Yeah. Um, the the <laughs> a set of shards and the um, enhancement prisms, right? Uh, you could get that for completing a you know a contest modifier raid. Um, it's, yeah. You could do stuff like that. You could do. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, you could do another off. armor drop, right? Another chance at getting a, a drop. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's things they could do. They they have enough loot in the game. They just have to spread it out a little bit more um, and allow us to actually grind for it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my big my big concerns with um, the stats is we don't have a way to grind the high stat rolls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you complete your one raid per character. You do Iron Banner if it's around, um, and then there's not really anything that drops 60 plus total stat level. So um, I would like a way to actually grind that um, or, you know, try to get those drops. And I think a contest mode would be cool for that. Yeah, maybe the contest That'd mode would cool. just weight the drops heavier towards those higher rolls. Because I, sure. I don't know yeah. if I necessarily want to see like an extra drop. I know a lot of people saying like, oh, just put an extra drop in there for the raid. And it's like, well... Mm -hmm what I want is better roles, yeah. really. Right. Mm. Right. And if I do something more difficult, like if I got two 55s <laughs> for doing the contest mode, I'd be like, uh, two 55s. Like that does nothing for yep. me. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't think it's worth it in the long run to, even if right. you roll on a reckless Oracle or whatever the auto it's in the long run, it's like, I agree. Another drop, not really enough. Uh, so I like that, like higher, more elite drops, so to speak, but getting ascendant shards and prisms, but also, yeah, right. higher stack gear, I think, would be, that'd be a big one. Because you'd only you have a few even... chances a week to try anyway, so it wouldn't break the game. Yeah, um, I also I also dislike that um, if you do a raid, you can get a 51 drop. It kind of blows my mind. Right, yeah. If I, if I do an endgame yeah. pinnacle activity, I'm in the face at that point. One. Yeah, it's like, I can literally just go do patrol and get these drops. What am I... Well, so with Crazy. with the dungeon, just play Destiny One at that point. You know like, what I mean? Right? Just, <laughs> the dungeon at the end, you get your pinnacle drop, and it's consistently a low rolled piece of armor. It's because it's the the moon armor. Yeah, but like and the moon armor only drops low fifties. It only drops yeah. low fifties. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yep. That's why. So the reason why it's like sixty four or sixty five, whatever, is because it comes masterworked. Yeah, right? you get the plus twelve. And the masterwork there. it gives yeah. you the plus twelve. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a moon drop, right? It's a moon armor piece, and if you go it. if you go do the the lectern and you do a moon armor piece, it's going to be a 50, 52. You could get a forty seven, right? Um, so you you don't really get a high drop. You do with the the masterwork, but it's not a a base high level total stat. Yeah, it, so, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would they put armor in there that can only roll like 50, uh, like around 50? And every time you get the, the masterworked version, you're like, oh, what? Why is this? Yeah. yeah. Why is this just, Something I think is pretty yeah. cool with the dungeon, though, is I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but you can actually farm the dungeon for random weapon drops. Mm, I don't know if you guys yeah. knew that. Yeah. So if you want the shotgun, if you want the sniper, you can farm the dungeon. Over and, and over? Uh, you can get, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize you can get that. A, a random a random drop. Yep. Yep. So you can just keep on redoing the the first two encounters or something, like blitzing yeah, through. Yeah, if you want to. Um, it's it's not like common, but you can definitely get the drops, um, and I think that's really cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. I think they kind of snuck it in there to test it because uh, I've seen a lot of community feedback that they want to be able to replay activities and you know get uh, RNG drops of you know armor pieces in the raid perhaps um, by completing encounters and just having it a very low drop rate. I, I would run. 20, 30 raids a week if I could, if I, you know, had a chance of getting extra armor drops. Extra drops, um, yeah. On different characters. I, I mean, I would, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, it definitely incentivize. It incentivizes mm -hmm. Sherpering, that's for sure. Yeah. Not yeah, only yeah, helping yeah. people, but also really the fact does. that you get, yeah. like, extra drops that could potentially yeah, you get stuff. influence exactly. your roles and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think there's room for... You know, making it more prestige on top of it, like adding more overload or barrier champions or doing more on top of it just being contest? Or do you think? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I, I think uh, I think uh, after seeing all of the content, what I would have liked to have seen happen is then push the raid back a week or two, uh, make it max power and then allow us time to get comfortable with the 980 Nightfall and get comfortable with these champions. 
and then in the raid have more champions. Uh, I think the champions were a big missed opportunity in my opinion, because um, mm -hmm. this should be the most difficult activity in the game, right? It, it's a raid, right? You're you're going up against, in this case, two big bad bosses, right? And you get a couple champions here and there. You don't even really have to kill a couple of them. Um, and the boss fight, there's only a champion at the very, very end, um, which is, uh, I think, a missed opportunity. Um, Isn't it only so on the orange it, side, too? It's both. It all depends on when you go in the portal. Oh, okay. So when the when the when Angelica spawns, right? When the Angelic spawns, mm. that's when the champion um, will spawn inside of the portals when you go invade. Um, so and they only drop five moats. It's not like they they just <laughs> yeah splurgy moats or anything. It's it's five as opposed to if you get the two hobgoblins, that's six. So I mean, it's not even better in that scenario. Mm, yeah, interesting. Um, but I think it would be pretty crazy if every time you go in there. There's a champion, and that would encourage um, double invaders and teamwork to kill that champion and then have him drop 10, right? And then killing the other enemies will drop 10, and then boom, there's 20. You're already two-thirds of the way to your to your goal or, you know, whatever the case is. I think that would have been really cool. Um, or, uh, like uh, Fran was just saying, why not make that a, a hard mode where, all right, you guys got a taste of the normal raid, now let's start throwing a bunch more champions in there, make it a lot more difficult. And on top of that, these guys are much more beefy. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. So Bungie sure. has talked about this, and they they dialed back mm -hmm. from hard mode because it was, I think they just straight up said it was difficult to manage two of them. And instead of having mm -hmm. two versions sure. of the raids, they decided sure. to have like their main one that they considered, this is how the, the raid is supposed to feel. Because um, mm -hmm. I agree. I, I miss that too. I miss having a hard mode that's, that changes mechanics somewhat and has a higher tier of difficulty. But if they're right, not, it's an issue of development time yeah. though. And like, I had to make a choice between a hard mode raid or a dungeon. I'll take the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Dungeon. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's like extra, it's, it's different yeah. content. New content. Right. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But that's why I don't I like know the, if that's a trade off or not, right. but, but that's why at least the contest thing is interesting is it must've been a server side or something solution, or maybe it was philosophy, but meaning I'm just like, why wouldn't you just drop that? button in at this point it just seems like right. free content so maybe it's just it's not as easy as it seems or something because like be. what would be the philosophy to not allow us to continue I, to do it outside of keeping it special to that single day which i i get that i think but. it's this keeping it special but also not having anything additional for people to get from it because there's some people who Incentive. don't follow these they don't follow the oh, right the um, yeah. the social channels and would see that and do it and they'd be like it gave me nothing extra what the yeah. hell right that's right. Yeah, actually, every time I bring it up, I always fall back on that. It's like when you bring up yeah. crossplay across PS4 and PC, you're like, yeah, we should do it. And then they're like, wait, <laughs> it's only 30 frames. And you you always forget that little detail. So, yeah, same mm -hmm. thing. You need a reward. Yeah, uh, I would say a lack of incentive would be a big part um, for sure. I think you solved it. Yeah, I feel like the cores and stuff alone would be interesting. That enough. would be really good. Senate shards. All right, Senate. Yeah, yeah I would just shards. start playing that for. I'm. Yeah, you're always. Yeah, I think. On that yeah, stuff. if we if we had more more ways to farm that, I think it'd be really, really fun. And people are lacking it. Um, I read yeah, an article it, earlier today saying that they're not really grinding for level ten gear because the only activity that drops ascended shards and golf balls pretty much or reliably drops them Beautiful. is the 980. And if you mm -hmm. don't have a stacked team, if you don't have friends that are comfortable, if you don't have a good loadout, well, there's a lot of people that aren't even going to do that. They're just going to be like, all right, this is too difficult for my time. I can't run through it in 10, 15, 20 minutes like some teams. So is it worth it at that point? Yeah. Last uh, week, the Garden um, Garden World, whatever it's called, the one on Osiris, Osiris mm -hmm. Strike. Oh, Jesus. That 980 was just... No thanks. Yeah. <laughs> what was it twenty four? Was it twenty four champions or something? It was an insane amount. And it had famine. It was, it was like, mm -hmm. it's like it was making me not want to play it. Yeah. I mm -hmm. I, I finished and I was like, I think I'll just not farm it this week. That's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna take a break. So like, that's not worth mm -hmm. it. Yeah. 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 Um, I also think uh, a big reason why they're they're not doing hard mode, and this is my opinion at least is they look at the percentile of people that actually complete these normal raids. Yeah, if you have a very true. low percentile that complete a normal raid, well, you're probably going to cut that in half, if not even more, for a hard mode or, or a prestige mode even, and see how many people do that. Because I remember back when I was starting out as a, a kindergarten, I would only do normal Leviathan, right? I wouldn't do prestige because 
I wasn't as familiar with raids and mechanics and how things worked. So I ran tons of Leviathans. Prestige I didn't really do that much until they updated it where Prestige Leviathan drops normal Leviathan loot. Then I started to actually, you know, try the more difficult content. So I think that's a, another reason is they would probably cut the amount of people that would actually engage in that activity. Right? You'd get people that are curious about it and they're like, oh, let's go try it. They get in there, they just get destroyed right away. And they're like, let's go back to the normal raid. That one's easier. <laughs> so uh, I think that would be another reason is um, just the lack of people that would do that. So in that aspect, I would rather a dungeon yeah. instead of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, dungeons are really cool because it allows people who maybe don't have that many people to play with to mm -hmm. just grab two people and they can go in, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah, the dungeons are awesome. They're fun. Dungeons are fantastic. I wish they'd yeah. add more of them throughout the year. I know it's tough content. Yeah. Like, I again, I am aware Bungie's bandwidth on being able to put out this type of content is difficult. But if it was, like, for me personally, if it's the choice between a few exotic weapon quests like the um, Outbreak Perfected versus a dungeon, I feel like I'd rather have the dungeon, personally. Oh, way more. I'd rather have a regular strike more than a <laughs> an more than like a exotic quest. An exotic quest is something I'm going to interact with once. All right. Get my exotic, get out. Maybe I do it three times to get, you know, like a, masterwork. You know, a ship out of it or a masterwork out of it, but I'm never going to return to it. Whereas a strike, every time I do strikes, it's in the playlist. Mm -hmm. You know, strike playlists to me are really boring because it, it's so static. Like we, we're playing the same strikes for three years. That's partially. I actually really no, go for it, Chevy. Go ahead. I was gonna say I actually really enjoy the year one strikes way more than any of the other strikes. <laughs> um, if I got a classic playlist for strikes, I would, I'd play the heck out of that. I really would. Interesting. Um, I just I thoroughly enjoy it. They they they're just really fun. They're well built. I don't enjoy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't enjoy the infinite forest as much i don't enjoy um the the 10 phases for the fanatic um i don't enjoy you know a couple of those other ones i don't mind not yeah. oh god the phases um, but, on the fanatic why has that not been nerfed yeah. yet <laughs> the damage gating yeah it's pretty crazy jesus um the big reason that a lot of people don't even do strikes is again incentive mm -hmm. why do them yeah um I get, you throw you throw random golf balls in there and random ascended shards maybe people will start to do them more often but um, I thoroughly enjoy the original year one strikes more so than the newer ones. Um, yeah. I wish we get I, that with Nightfall, though. Like 980 yeah. drops the most, but even a nine's, uh, what is it, 50 or 50, 60? Yep. The, the, that, that still drops like um, some ascendant. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, the prisms, some of that. And You can get a shard so you, from the 950. It's rare. You can get a shard, too. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, right. you still get a chance in there. So you're, uh, can you? you're getting I part like of it. You can. You can't. It's soup. It's more rare, I believe. You're right. I could be wrong, but but says but meaning at least we get a prisms on common exotic gear. Common. Oh, so no shard. Yeah. So no. Okay. No I'm shard. shard. Yep. But like when I go into those 980s, I'm actually looking for the um, the exotics because I want to get good yeah. rolls of the exotics. Yeah. yeah, I agree. When I'm yeah um, yeah yeah, which is cool to be able to do now. You know, roll exotic, you know, armor or whatever. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So Say that after my my seven astrocyte burst that I've gotten so far. Yeah, there's a weird <laughs> duplication <laughs> that's happened with that. I've I'll have like a, a, an exotic be the theme that drops all the time. It's weird. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I got very yeah. lucky with my pinnacles turning in my pinnacles this week. Oh, super lucky because I had the four iron banner things, uh, bounties. I turned those in and I got four unique slots. Wow, nice. which nice. was amazing. Wow, that's a jump. <laughs> Not level. expecting that. And that yeah. was with the new the two plus power two. level bump, yeah, right? Plus two, yeah. Plus two, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. It was awesome. Uh, I was going to say, with the strikes and uh, desirability to play them, yeah, one of them is definitely rewards. I completely agree on that. But the other one is, why have they not brought, brought back things like small arms, specialists, and further expanded that like make all hand cannons super powerful for one day make all uh bows bows for god's sakes imagine if bows got like a 100 percent increase in damage for one day during those strike days then you could run that quad bow you know that quad bow build and just shred through things like i i feel like that would go a long ways as well for making people interested to just jump in and chill and strike playlists because i i personally mm -hmm. can play those strikes I, I think it's fun to jump in for a bit but i noticed the same modifiers over and over they get boring, you know. I'd like mm -hmm. be nice for them to bring back some of the oldies and make some new ones as well. 
fact, I was surprised yeah. when I didn't see any new ones happen with Shadow Keep. Any new modifiers? Yeah. 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 Like for the the regular heroic strikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never, I never. Uh, of course, you guys know I never played D one, so I, I'm not familiar with a lot of those um, modifiers. I've heard of them, um, but it definitely seemed like they had much better modifiers in D one than they do in D two now. There's a little um, more variety in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we like feeling strong, so give us a day to feel strong and just blow through stuff, and you know it's it's enjoyable. Um, but uh, I don't know. You have to you have to be very careful. Don't just make the content easy. You know, make us. For sure, more yeah. powerful. Yeah, I think I think having like a mayhem day in strikes would be crazy. Yeah, and just running through with your your super the entire time, just popping supers left and right. Mm -hmm. I'd have so much fun. I, I just yeah, it was called daybreak in D one. There was a few times. It was yeah, yeah they had daybreak. Well, that's yeah. a thing. Cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was like oh my god, and again, it was cool. And it doesn't need to be around all the time, right? You don't need to buff things to create that experience. You can just say like, it's week where it's daybreak. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Like, yeah. so that would be cool. Yeah, do do a weekly event where you just have like you know different mods for a week, and then you go back to your normal stuff. Yeah, um, I think it would draw more people in. Yeah, I feel like for a long time now, Destiny has not had a problem of things to play specifically. It's mm -hmm. incentives and things changing on a weekly basis of how they seem. And like Armor Two Point has been great. Hey, have you been enjoying it, mm -hmm. Armor Two Point Oh, Chevy? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, the only thing that frustrates me is I just I want a high tier build, but I have no no way to grind it. Mm. I, I, I just Except can't for do resets. I, yeah, resets. Um, getting really lucky, and even on that, you have to you have to get the correct affinity, you have to get the correct armor slot, and you have to get the roll that you want, the stat total you want, mm -hmm. and in the stats that you want them. <laughs> so it, it's it's a very low percentage uh, of getting what you want. Um, and if there was a way to farm that, I would love it. I would farm the crap out of it on all three characters just because why not? Um, but I yeah, love it. Seemed, it. I, it's so nice. It, it seems so left to chance on that one. You know, like I like yeah. that there's like a ceiling there, but it's literally like, like on top of waiting between 951 and 960, also, yeah, waiting for high stat rolls and then the affinity. It just seems like, I think it's too much personally. I think, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's what you were getting at, but like... Yeah. I personally think the end game is in getting that stuff so I can max out my character and start building things. And I feel like I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it. It's like, what, 5% mm -hmm. of the population is going to get there? I don't know. Yeah. One of the theories going around as well is this might be a, a yearly goal. So maybe they don't want you to get that that max build on season one of Shadowkeep. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want you to have it by the end. Right? Well, that makes so sense, if you get actually. That, if you get that, yeah, if you get yeah. that god build right away, it's like... What am I going to do for the rest of the year? Are you saying yeah. you think stats maybe get better with the seasonal um, content? Or not like better. how would only... it get better? You just chance right. over time? Uh, so how would it get better? You can't really make it better unless you can get tier 20, which I think would be crazy. But don't do that. Please don't. <laughs> like, yeah, no. How do you just get, though, to um, max of what we have today? You're um, saying it might so, take forever. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to RNG. I think that's what they're kind of baking that's on is time. it'll take you a while of constant grinding to get that drop. And when you finally get it, you're going to be really excited. But I just feel like it's just way too low of a percentage that it's going to crush people's motivation to grind it. And then they're just not going to go for the builds. They're not going to yeah. experiment. And that that's that's one of the issues. Um, so, uh, of course, we all know that this is brand new, though. And, it, you know, Luke Smith said that uh, he, he anticipated everybody going into day one with Armor 1.0. Well, everybody that I know went in with armor 2.0 because mm. it's, it's better. It is. It's just flat out better. Yeah. Um, you can customize it how you want to. Um, but the build is where it struggles a little bit more. Um, and the stat build. they could come out with. Yeah, exactly. Yep. The stat build is where it struggles more. And because it's a brand new, a brand new thing to the game, right? They're, they're trying it. So, hey, here's this. This is just a taste. And then they're looking at feedback, I'm sure. And I'm sure next season they're going to come out and say, okay, so we heard that you guys don't like that you can get a 51 stat roll from the raid. We we heard that. So we we have now set a cap where you only get 60 plus. And that's how I think it should be. If it's a game pinnacle activity, you should get a 60 plus stat roll on the raid. I don't see yeah, why not. I, don't, I agree with that. I, yeah, I, I get a 51, right? Um, I hope that is what they do. I just think it's going to be like what it's going to be next mm -hmm. July when you get your full set that you want. Like, I'm sorry, it's we're going to be excited about the yeah. like, yeah. Honestly, think of 
how many people drop out right now, actually, the next few weeks, a lot uh -huh. of players that came in. The first six weeks is kind of the big rush, right? And then mm -hmm. it starts to wean through the rest so, of the year. So I got to be honest, hearing you say that sure. sounds 100% like what Bungie would do. Like they would make their, <laughs> I'm serious, like it would be, they would make their whole yearly goal is to make these perfect builds for year three of Destiny 2. And because they've said that they're not going to have as big of a change with these seasons coming on up. So I don't foresee them yeah. like completely reshaping our our build chase every season, aside from the artifacts. My big, my big devil's advocate to this would be, what if I want to grind top tier builds with different seasonal armor pieces? Mm -hmm. What if I want a you know a yeah like a scourge? Correct. Sorry. What if I want a season of the forge build for scourge of the past? Right. Um. So you know me, Glad, and tons of other people, we like to do challenges. So we're grinding for those those old gear pieces to get good stat rolls so we can do challenges or maybe we just want to do raids or whatever the case is, right? And especially with the new content as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. So we have this season right here. Well, uh, I mean, I want a good build for Garden of Salvation. Okay, and now comes next season. Um, what is next season called? I forgot. Season of Dawn? Season of Dawn, yep. Yep. So mm -hmm. Season of Dawn comes and now you have to farm a new armor set for Season of Dawn. Um, well, it, it's very very uh difficult to farm multiple seasonal sets for high tier builds um with what we have available um so i just think we need to tweak how and what drops how you know the the total stats it's, drop what drops it's and, too rng right like now that. there's no Correct. pathway for it and that's what's frustrating or or create a consumable that allows you to tweak it right we have the lectern right now imagine if we could take that raid armor piece bring it to the lectern and then have a, a rare quality drop that we got from finishing the raid on the final chest. And you can then use it to change the affinity. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Um, helps with RNG. Helps you manipulate it a little bit. Um, if you get a... Imagine just getting... Nobody likes the solar pieces because you know everybody's running snipers right now. Grenade launchers, stuff like that. Solar has fusion rifles, auto rifles, things like that. So it's it's the least of the three affinities right now. So imagine if you can I bring it to solar the lectern. In, uh, PvP. Do you? I guess PvP. Uh, you know again, coming from a PvE uh, Aaron perspective. <laughs> Aaron Tell? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, just imagine if you could bring that that god roll solar piece that you got or that, holy crap, this is actually a pretty good roll. Ah, it's solar, though. All right, well, throw it in the vault. Keep it going. Imagine if you could bring it to the lectern and then, you know, turn in a, a consumable and then go do a quick quest or a mission or whatever um and then come back and boom now you have void or you have arc or something um i think if they implemented something like that it'd be pretty cool that would help for sure it's still yeah the issue right now though is these low stat rolls or trying to chase yeah. a stat build yeah. that's gonna be tough i mm -hmm. i feel like i haven't been hindered on being able to build things that are very useful for me both in like the 980s and just general general builds overall for playing uh, end game activities. So I feel like they've done a good job of letting players get gear, get geared up and be able to attack those things, but they're not doing a good job of letting you get some crazy maxed out builds. And Correct. I don't, it's a, it, it's one of those things where maybe they didn't want that to be a factor. They didn't want a, a tons of guardians running around with perfectly rolled gear by the end of the season. Yeah, I think it's like what we said. It's I think it's a long term chase to get your perfectly mm -hmm. rolled gear, and then if you do want the look of some new armor, then you're just gonna have to be grinding for that new armor for the perfect roll. But yeah. yeah, I think I think if you're trying to make the super most optimal build, then they want that to be more than just a season. That thing. sounds bungee to me. So I'm yeah, saying like it just it really does. Yeah, that, for sure. <laughs> sounds like their whole year what they plan for the. <laughs> The armor. I just yeah. I just wish there was an armor. I mean, a weapon 2.0 because like I really like mm. armor 2.0. I just wish the weapons had another system in there. And I know it's a difficult thing to balance, especially when you got PvP and all these things. But man, I would love. What would you do? I I don't think it's hard at all. You just recluse one loadout done. Oh, <laughs> solved it. Anything else. Right? <laughs> How yeah. would you do a, a weapon 2.0? It comes down to the fact that the mod is just one mod. So mm. it's completely one dimensional. As soon as you have your gun and then you throw your mod on, 
there it is. It's very one dimensional right now. They need things sure. where you have your base gun that can have like two main perks and then have a grid of some sort or a energy system like they do with the armor that would add either one or two more perks to it that don't have to be crazy, insanely good or some game breaking type of thing, but can affect things that are, say, based on activities or, or planetary stuff like moon perks. Like you get, get some sort of type of perk system for your moon build. So you can have these like things that they're not going to break the game, but they're going to give you a little bit more bump here and there for your um, for the way you, the, the weapons handle and feel. And then I think right. uh, I think the mod system is just it needs something to branch out of it. Like if you use a particular mod, it needs a branching system to where it allows other mods that have like maybe an infinity system allow it to work with each sure. other to synergize. Something like that to feel like you're you're creating like a puzzle on your guns. I think if if I was to do weapons 2.0, this would be a big thing because this would be kind of a bit of an overhaul as well. But um, I would make the elements of weapons also matter. So now we have we currently have champions. So we have Barry, we have Unstoppable, we have Overload. I would make it to where any enemy that has an affinity shield, so a solar shield, an arc shield, actually has some type of effect around them like maybe the solar shields when they're near you they burn you or the arc shields they can kind of stun you if you're too close and you have to have a matching affinity weapon to deal with that otherwise you're going to have the negative consequences of the elements hmm. i think i'd like something like that to make elements on weapons be more than just oh break a shield yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i'd also love to just see something with scopes i don't know exactly what it but like how often do you guys ever switch your scopes like you usually don't right because the range stats attached and yeah I but i like the range that yeah yeah i like some of the other scopes but i almost never change them so i feel like that's right. some room for like yo you know what like this one whatever i want the the hollow graph thing on it or you know could could yeah, be I part of it find some of them visually more appealing like yeah they're more wide open so i have a better view or like the zoom rate is more it mm -hmm. works better yeah, for me, but I always or... just use the one that has the best range stat. Of course, exactly. So I feel like there's something there to play with on top of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Chevy, what would you do with weapons if I know? Or uh, I would he, say he pulls a blueprint off the way. Yeah. Like, All right, let me show you. And also, <laughs> right, it's up. okay if you think that it's perfectly fine the way it is, too. Like, nothing wrong with that. I definitely don't think it's fine how it is. No. Um, because based off of what I do, it's basically you have the Izanagi, you have the Recluse, and then you have Delirium, or you have, uh, you know, the Wendigo, Wendigo is what I call it, right? Mm. Um, there's not really <laughs> any other weapons that exist for stuff that I do. Um, so there needs to be more variety across the board for all weapons. Um, how would they do that? I don't really know. Um, didn't you guys used to level up weapons in D1? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You would unlock the perk slots. I think that I would like be really that nice. Personally. That was yeah, it, your one only, nice. right? Yeah, it, it was kind of short lived. Man. It was short lived because once sure. Taken King came out, they introduced Motes of Light, and then you could spend Motes of Light into the gun to automatically level it up. So you just sure. dumped 100 Motes of Light and it was fully leveled. Sure. Yeah, I would like something like that where you can actually unlock stuff, unlock different perks, so you can uh, kind of customize it. Um, I definitely th th think that would be pretty cool. Uh, like you said, there, there's very limited mods that are actually useful. There really are. You don't really use very many of the the weapon mods that we have right now. There's there's quite a few of them. Um, I don't know exactly how many, but I can tell you I use probably um, maybe five total. Yeah. Uh, and there's no really there's really no reason to use the other ones because they they just don't compete, mm -hmm. right? Um, so definitely having um, I do like the idea of having a third perk. I think that'd be really cool. Like I said, nothing crazy. I don't want Outlaw Rampage Swashbuckler. Right. That'd be absurd. <laughs> uh, I mean, I want that, but I don't well, want that. Well. that. That'd be a little bit too crazy. Um, but I mean, like Outlaw Rampage, maybe Field Prep, Rangefinder, you know, something like that. I think that'd be really cool. Um, uh, but yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of nice. I think we're a long ways away from Weapons 2.0, but I do yeah. think that's something we need. Yeah, you guys have a lot of good points with that. Yeah. What do you on weapons real fast? We haven't got to talk to you about recluse and mountaintop. Oh, I'm God. very curious. What would you do? There's been a lot of like, you know, nerf them or take them out of the game. My suggestion was like, tell us they're going away in 60 days or so. What or do you think they're fine? You know, where do you land on those two? I think mountaintop is fine now. Um, 
since removing auto loading mountaintop uh it, it does still take skill to use this is from a pve player perspective so yeah good, i can't speak point. on behalf of pvp i know it's really frustrating um playing iron banner and having mountaintop recluse hunters jumping around everywhere um but from a pve player's perspective i i don't think mountaintop is is bad i think it's it's perfectly fine where it is right now um it actually has a very small hitbox um so you actually have to be pretty accurate with it if you shoot at the ground near them it does damage but it doesn't kill them so it's not overly strong so i don't think touch i don't think you should touch mountaintop in pve at least uh when it comes to the recluse i'm sick of using the weapon <laughs> yep it is right way too good it really is it, it's a weapon that encourages spring shooting the body um and it reloads so crazy fast yeah. especially with an enhanced submachine gun loader and feeding frenzy um it, it literally i was looking at it yesterday and i just sat there for like five minutes i was like this literally has every single best perk in slot on this on this <laughs> gun yeah and um, I'm okay with using it for a season, like it, it was a pinnacle for season of opulence. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it for the season, but then it's a new season. Come out with a new meta. Come out with a different weapon. Come out, uh, you know, tweak it. We're good. We used it for a season for three months. Let's let's move on to something else now. Um, and I thought they were gonna do that, and I was very surprised when they didn't really touch it mm -hmm. for the yep. most part. And it's still just so good. It really is. And this is also from a PC player's perspective because I, I hear the console people. Uh, there's a lot of recoil, and I know it doesn't perform the same. Um, mm -hmm. But that thing, you can you can laser across the map with the recluse. Yeah. If if you're on PC, it's just so good. So so how would I change it? Yeah. Um, Master of Arms needs a rework, uh, for sure. So there's a couple things that were floating around, a couple ideas that uh, have been floating around the community. Um, I would like to see Master of Arms only procs on Recluse, not from other weapons. Mm -hmm. So I can't use a mountaintop, get a kill, and then swap to Recluse or a Heavy, whatever the case is. Um, or I would like them to adjust it so it only increases specific damage. Um, so specific damage could be um, precision damage, yeah. right? So some machine guns aren't necessarily precision weapons, right? Uh, but I do think it'd be pretty nice to increase the precision damage, not necessarily body damage, because you already do more damage um, percentile-wise to to the body versus to criticals or crits, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if you increase the the critical damage, um, precision damage, that would be something that would encourage aiming. Mm -hmm. I think I think aiming is pretty important in this game. <laughs> um, they, could increase, you have they could increase yeah. crotch damage. <laughs> uh, yeah i mean if i got shot there i'd definitely be hurt shot in the belly lands move aim right a little there. further yeah. down oh increased oh, damage. i'd be i'd be struggling yeah yeah so um i think they need to rework master of arms specifically um and they need to tweak it um to not gut the weapon still make it something you can use but not make it something that is irrelevant anymore um so i got like a question with that is Sure. Do you think, like you said, you wanted to see them move the meta and it would change for this season? Obviously, didn't disappoint about that. Do you want to see them start getting very serious about sunsetting things for each season? So instead of having to fix that weapon and have it sit around in the sandbox forever, would you prefer to see it have like a season or two season lifespan and then it gets, then it can't get uh, increased in power level so you wouldn't be effective? in later yeah. later type of stuff or would you rather yeah. have them nerf it um leave it in the past leave it in the past okay yeah. now yeah if you sure. want to leave it in the past how would you handle the political side of it of people saying <laughs> i just got my recluse man and now i can't you know use it for the next season damn you bongo like <laughs> yeah i mean i could definitely understand um i think in most of the stuff that we have with the exception of the uh, the legend rank in comp, right? So if you're going for not forgotten or something, I think most of the stuff you can get in a somewhat short amount of time frame. Um, 2100, especially this season, is not difficult to get at all. Um, it's I think it's eight wins. If you get eight wins, you get 2100 in comp, which is yep. pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I would say there's enough time to get it, and it doesn't take a lot of time to get it realistically. Um, but I could see the people that are like, you know, I only have two hours a night or, you know, six hours a week to play. And 
you know, it took me two months to actually be able to play it. And it's not because I couldn't do it. It's because I just didn't have time um, or I wasn't capable to do it. I just didn't have time. I could see that. Um, I would say, I mean, it sucks, but unfortunate. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just want new weapons. Uh, we just use so many of the same weapons. I used the Midnight Coup for an entire year, and then I used it for like two seasons after that. And then the Recluse came out, and then I used the, only the Recluse pretty much, because those were like the weapons. And I love the weapons, but I don't want to only use them. And I know I can put on a different weapon, but they're just so good. How do you not put it on? Yeah. Um, and... I would say if you really want that weapon, you're, you're gonna you're gonna grind for it, and you will get it. Uh, I also think if there's a timestamp on it, um, that might motivate people to get it earlier. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Hey, people might yeah. actually push to get it because they're like, "Oh, I can only use it for this season, so I'll try and get it fast yeah. as possible." Well, it, so you, it could also make them not care as well. Yeah, like, it, oh, it's, it's both perspectives yeah. for sure. It's it, you know, well, it's only here for three months, so why the heck should I get it? Whatever, I'm gonna use something else next season, anyways. Or it's, oh, it's only here for three months. Uh, I hear this weapon's pretty crazy. No, I kind of want to grind for that. So, I mean, it's, um, I think that's just general player base uh, mindset. Um, Th that's why I said maybe two seasons. So if they had like a timer on yeah. there and if Bungie was more open about it, like you said, if they were very uh, obvious about the time frame for some of these things being useful. So they had a thing on there that said for the season nine and 10, these guns are going to be able to reach max power after that. Right. They're going to be limited. Their light will be shrinking or fading. The light fades in this weapon guardian. You know, some, right. something like that. And then... Some of like weapon degradation. Yeah, some crazy... Mm. Yeah, it built in the lore. There's degradation now. Um, <laughs> Somebody stole it from your vault. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I it's just that easy, Teft. I mean, I'm not a writer, but <laughs> <laughs> I personally think Sunset and Gear would be uh, the. It's definitely the way to go for this stuff because they're having so many of these weapons, and it's gonna be it, like I'm loving Iznagi's because I didn't use it at all until now, and like, oh, Iznagi's is fun, but I'm gonna be sick of it by the end of the season or by next season. You know Teft, what I mean? You know, I was just <laughs> yeah. I was thinking yeah. that actually uh, above your vault is like a photo like in Back to the Future of like the gun and you're like holding it and it slowly like in Back to the Future <laughs> fades more and more over time <laughs> to show you that it's it's about done. Yeah. So a question I, I would bring up with this, though, is how do you choose which weapons get this treatment? Is it all weapons in that season? I think it should or be all it, weapons. I think it should. Every, yeah, I think all weapons should eventually be phased out because over time you want to be you want to be incentivized to use the new weapons and that's what we did in destiny one that's what we did and they eventually overturned this decision but you know you got the best weapons in the game from vault of glass and some of them were still good in the dark below because they were so damn good but by the time well they were still pretty good <laughs> once, once uh what was the third what was the second dlc in destiny one uh, House, of, House, of, House of Wolves. House of Wolves. Yeah, like some of them were still good in House of Wolves, but most of them, PVE wise, were pretty much sunsetted. And they eventually they turned that over, right? Because they brought in this kind of way to bring your weapons back up in in uh, House of Wolves too. Mm -hmm. So they had etheric light, right? Etheric light, yeah. I honestly, I think the year one to year two transition in Destiny One was the best example of how to handle weapons that were outperforming in the in the sandbox and introducing yeah. new weapons that were great. The problem is Bungie doesn't seem capable of adding a bunch of new weapons every season, so it's that is a big problem. It's just not. That's what I was going to bring up. Yeah, yeah, that was going to be yeah. my devil's advocate to phasing everything out. Look at what do we realistically? What do we have that's new in Shadowkeep? How many weapons? The moon do we weapons. Have? I don't know how many that Vex is. It's a weapons. good amount. Yeah, it's moon weapons. Vex dozen. offensive raid the pinnacles, and then the now like dungeon slash altar thingy. Yeah. Right. So, right. Twenty to thirty, basically. Mm -hmm. right. So I mean, there's yeah. definitely a good amount. Um, good amount. But how many of those is... are better than what you were already using? Like, how many of those got into your regular there's rotation? Actually, yeah good amount that i'm using like i'm using reckless oracle from the raid mm -hmm. like that's a really yeah. solid gun um, i'm using the moon sniper 
as yeah. well. Tranquil that, tranquility. I really like that. Is, yeah, tranquility is mm -hmm. great. Um, even the the Moo grenade launcher, because it can come with... Yeah, um, love and death. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's... So I've been using those a lot. Um, and then even now I'm using Blasphemer, which is the shotgun, because it's a primary slug shotgun. Whereas before I'd have to use like chaperone, whereas mm -hmm. now I can use that and then I can use an exotic somewhere else, which is nice. So there's actually but, a few that I've gotten and been like, oh, I could see how I'd want to use this. And some that are really good, like Tranquility. And having full yeah. court as a perk on a grenade mm -hmm. launcher is amazing. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll say my top it's also, three. It's super hard to address this in PvP too, because yeah. if you, like, how do you sunset weapons in PvP? Because the power level is leveled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I think you'd have people favoring exotics at that point. I'm um, just relying on certain exotics. So I don't know that you would be able to keep up with the with the PvP uh, meta. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, the tranquility is good in PvP as well. If you're a sniper, mm -hmm. um, you you can find shotguns that are good, right? You can use a raid shotgun in PvP if you want to. Yeah. I mean, um, it's not bad. It's it's not as good, it's, right? It's recluse and mountaintop that are still part of the problem. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like you're not exploring other guns because you're just like, yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, I want to point out something real quick that it's not mm -hmm. just Recluse Mountaintop is the issue. It's that the meta gets discovered and then yeah. those are the weapons you use exclusively mm -hmm. because they are obviously the best. And then you don't swap out of them until something better shows up. And that's the reason right. to have rotation of this stuff is that if it's not Mountaintop Recluse, then it's the next next best thing. And that's why I'm saying Izanagi's like, I'm going to be sick of Izanagi's in about three to six months because I've been using it exclusively as my sniper in PVE. I do really enjoy that weapon. Yeah, it's been great. I do really enjoy it. Yeah, I've been loving using it, but I definitely know yeah. that in like six months, I'm going to be like, I've shot a yeah. little too many of these. <laughs> no, that's yeah. like Whisper of the Worm, right? It's like, yeah. You know, that gun in all of its various forms was super fun when it first came out. But eventually, I just got sick of using it because yeah. I was using it for every raid, every DPS phase. Yeah. Actually, it's funny. Whisper, I feel like, proves there's something there of taking. We saw the backlash. Everybody was actually pretty upset. Thanks for killing my favorite gun. But then mm -hmm. it was kind of nice to not use it anymore. And all like Darcy started getting love and so on. And then it actually was able to come back and find love. So I feel like, as yeah. crazy as it might sound, to to nerf Reckless, and everybody's pissed, like, I don't know. Isn't the model, I'm not saying exactly, but Whisper kind of proved it could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But the community it, did get very upset when they nerfed Oh, yeah. Reckless. Very yeah. upset. Here we are today. Still Slayer playing. came out with a really good I don't know that this video. would be a popular discussion, Fran. Like, if we were to <laughs> go on Reddit and look at a, a discussion about this show, I would think that... <laughs> A lot of people would be very upset that we were even suggesting sunsetting. Oh, a guarantee. Oh, yeah. A lot of these yeah. people we'll just be, probably we'll got it. Page, front page tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> but, but seriously, yeah, it's like uh, Tef just said, six months from now, are you uh, looking forward? I, like, I got, uh, actually, I have the solution and it comes back to weapons 2.0 or weapons 3.0 or whatever it is. Is that if the weapons evolve as well with perks that are good that actually you want to use in the encounters, then of course you're going to leave behind the weapons that were in previous seasons. Because they mm -hmm. can't get those perks or those they can't have like the artifact type of roles type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. So if there was a energy bar type of thing that you could fill up in the new weapons and it could accept perks that dropped in that season from the artifact, then you're more likely to use those weapons because you could have unique potential roles from those. And then you would just not use the recluse because you could potentially get something that's uh, more unique or better. When I say sure. it, I don't know. Would they actually make something better than Reckless? <laughs> Probably not. Ah, you never know. It's a pretty good gun. It's too, yeah. Pretty good. Shields I mean, don't the, those guns with perfect perks, it's hard, mm -hmm. even if you, like, it, you know, even if you make a new system that has, like, all these new features and benefits, like, a gun that has perfect perks on it is still hard to beat. You know, unless you add more, <laughs> yeah, more so, guns. So like you said, like you said, what if you, yeah, yeah, what if you get a, a, a energy ten or a master worked weapon and that unlocks a third mod, right? Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, maybe yeah. you you literally get outlaw, you get rampage, and then you get field prep or you get rangefinder. I would say that's better than a outlaw rampage benedict coop. 
Um, but of course, you would have to factor in the specific weapon and whatnot as well. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there's a 150 in Shadow Keep. Is there a hand cannon 150? I think there's only the 140. I thought there. I thought and there a 180. Was, but here we go. They didn't actually right bring now. that many hand cannons with. Yeah. Yeah, they've been well, really they, careful they, about that stuff. Like, it's like what they, two? Yeah, I think it's the the Love Lullaby, right? Oh, there's three. Oh, is there three? There's the Vex Offensive one, the Raid, and then. Yeah, Lullaby. they're all 140s, right? Oh, 180, oh, actually, 140s. No, the, the 150. 110? I'm pretty sure the raid one is a oh, 150, right? Yeah. The ancient gospel. I think it's a 150. Ancient gospel. Yeah, but yeah. it's a yeah. energy it's one. Not, but it's an energy, right? Yeah. It is uh, energy. It sounds like yeah. a nerf gun. Yep. It the, like, the sound is yeah. It doesn't sound like it packs a punch. So I feel like I'm tickling people, and I'm like yeah. I'm not, but it sounds like I am. Right. But I'd be okay with getting a, a rapid hit and swashbuckler and rangefinder ancient gospel. Mm, that sounds fun. That's oh, yeah, like Rose a lot of fun. Rose, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, that's something that's that they could look fair. into for sure. Oh, it's a one forty. Okay. Yeah. One eighty one Rose spare rash. They also they also they they hurt hand cannons pretty pretty they hard. Did, they did yeah. they hit them pretty hard. So mm -hmm. that's why it kind of feels like you're shooting a nerf gun at them. It does hard. at times, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's interesting. I don't know. It's a tough problem to solve, but at the it end is. of the day, like, I don't want to be going to year four of Destiny 2 and have, using all the exact same loot. Oh, God. No. It no. feels like even if we're not going to have a sunset thing every, you know, three months, there needs to be a cutoff point for something. If right. there's something that, like, if you're just nerfing and nerfing and trying to figure out how to fix it and put it in the sandbox and you can't figure that out, it feels like at some point you just got to be like, let's just start fresh. Everyone yeah. starts fresh, new everything. So that's, that's what we did though in Destiny Two, and yep. But that idea was fun. <laughs> it was many of the other ideas that didn't. You know what everything I mean? I don't else. think anybody had a problem with new weapons. It was no. uh, everything else. We should probably uh, move on from the weapon discussion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might want to do some Twitter questions. Uh, there, wait, yeah. there was a uh, Twab. Was there anything interesting in Twab? No, mm, not too much. <laughs> no, <laughs> they. They are fixing uh, the Isnagi's burden thing, though, right? I was going to ask about that. Now. Yeah. So it is fixed today. Like yeah. Today it was fixed. Yep. That's right. I did a quick search on That's Reddit big. before the show, and I saw uh -oh. some posts saying that people <laughs> were having broken? issues still. Oh no. Um, are they having issues because really... they don't know the forge rotates? Um. Well, you can do it. Oh yeah, maybe. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really look too much into it. I just saw like three <laughs> posts trending, and I was like, oh god, please no. Um, if they have another <laughs> issue, I think they just need to hand it out to people and say sorry. Yeah, I good. think so. I oh, think God, at this no. point, like, just yes. let people have it. It's fine. Especially yeah. being a um, meta weapon. Yeah, uh, that yeah. you can't it's, obtain. That's that's pretty yeah. rough. Yeah, I, I would yeah. think it's fixed at this point. For them to come out again, it's, that would be mm -hmm. some serious egg on their face. I doubt right. it. Oh, I didn't um, mention that uh, me and my group of friends won the fashion emblem. Congratulations. Yes. Oh, congr a oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> did you do the pray to vex thing? What did you guys do? We did the. It was Callus watching his yeah. minions of darkness perform for him. That's oh. what. It was. So we dressed up as dead. acolytes and vex. Congratulations! Nice. That was awesome. Congrats. So it it's the one I saw that emblem. I was like, need it, need the emblem. <laughs> need it. You got it. So beautiful. I did not believe yeah. it. it I aspire to one day take the time and win a. Uh, uh, the emblem for my tower casuals, as I've always called them. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's been since probably day one. Like I was pushing, I would wear um, the Born Spark, the white armor. Uh, when I went back to the tower, almost every time I'd like switch it and did. Oh, amazing. And I'd be like just walking around in my robes, you know, and like, and it stood out so much. And I was like, why would I wear anything else? I'm like trying to unwind, you know, and hashtag tower casuals. So anyway, I really, now they have this emblem, I'm like, if I can't win, yeah. You gotta Having do had it. passion, yeah, for half a decade. You gotta, you gotta figure it. that out. So it's a lot there of pressure. There was actually the the one thing in the twelve that was really cool is there was a winner who had um, a bunch of people dressed as in red with the Jade Rabbit helmet mask, Ooh, nice. and they were pointing their Jade Rabbit in the Crucible at <laughs> Shax, which <laughs> I thought good. was amazing cool. to show that it all about momentum control. That was really cool. That one was awesome. Yeah, I finally got to play uh, Momentum Control, by the way. Did you, you crouch? Did you get wall hacks? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's 
what's busted about it's it. Stupid. If they just took out True Sight for hunters, I think the mode mm-hmm. would be amazing. But with True just Sight, it's, it's just straight corner. up broken. Everyone's just gonna. Everyone's just crouching, waiting, and then they just keep shooting. Yeah, yeah there's no momentum. No, <laughs> momentum made me think that we should like move or we start burning or something, mm-hmm. and it's the actual opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right. laughs> everyone just stands. Still. You see your teammate die on the corner. You're like, should I go investigate? No, because it's most likely a hunter <laughs> that crouched and now knows that you're exactly coming around the corner at what time. It's stupid, yep. man. Yeah, it's funny you say that because the uh, one of the movie of the weeks the honorable mention is a Jade Rabbit, um, Middle Tree Hunter, double Peaking. seventh column. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think he I saw literally. this before. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he kills seven people. He turns around to the other spawn and kills peak, them all peak, again. Peak, peak, yep. peak, peak. Yeah. I wonder how he did that. that. Oh, true sight. Yeah. Wall he hacks. just controlled their momentum. <laughs> Easy. It's like, you know what's better than having a radar? Having an actual visual representation of people on the screen of where they <laughs> exactly are. Exactly where they are. You know exactly what they're using. You know if they've got a shotgun <laughs> out, a sniper out. You know where they're looking. <laughs> Do they have it's, friends with them? It's yeah, amazing, it's a lot. actually. Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Just like that gun in Perfect Dark, man. Yep. Uh, all right. Wait. Hold on. Before right. we get to questions, also, <laughs> there was something else that happened this week. First mm. Guardian Bagel. Bagel. Oh, Solo the dungeon, right? At nine 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 light. He did. Yep. And then nothing happened. He didn't use a blue fusion <laughs> rifle, and he well, did also something did do happen, the. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right? he, there was a, there's a bunch of steps before that, right? Where it's like, dude, play bowling in a top hat under the sun or something. <laughs> Visit the farm, right? <laughs> play soccer. I think it is actually it's like play soccer, right? Play soccer at the farm or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's something. But said so Airsborne is the, really good at soccer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But for those Airsborne. who don't know what this was so big about. Can we explain, just in case folks missed it? Yeah. Like, why was this supposed to be a big deal? I don't know. You tell me, Fran. Well, I had to read up. Or Chevy? Chevy? Yeah, Fran. Okay. You should Chevy yeah, knows explain it, I'll Chevy. tell you guys. I'll tell you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chevy so, um, in the uh, <laughs> Truth to Power uh, lore entry, the Act Choose React, it specifically says that uh, achieve light level 999 and defeat Dueling Karu in a one-person fire team to unlock the true ending of the Dreaming City. So we had a couple people. Um, the, the one that I was following most closely was Zupa. He yeah, was literally right Zupa there. Zupa. Bagel put in, I forgot what he said. He put in like 200 hours in like the last two weeks or something crazy. Ooh. It's like a ridiculous amount of hours in like the last two weeks. Unreal. Um, I don't remember if it was 200, but it was, it was a lot. And he ended up catching up. He got some good RNG drops for his pinnacles, and he ended up surpassing Zupa. Um, with his gear score and ended up getting to 999 light. So it was a big ordeal because it's in the lore, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So what could happen? What happens if you actually go in there? Um, it was crazy because he's only done Shattered Throne twice ever. And he's never and, soloed uh, it, right? He's never soloed it. He literally did it twice to get the Izanagi's burden, and he actually got carried. He he joined some and two people, just helped him through it and just did amazing. everything for him. Wow. Um, he he reached out to Glad and said, "Hey, if you want to go on my account to do this to see if you know anything happens, um, you can go ahead." And uh, you know, Glad basically was a he had a very tough decision. He said, "You do it. You can do it. You earn this. So why not do it?" And uh, hopped into a Discord call with him, and we walked him through solo Shattered Throne for his third time ever. Went through the entire Shattered Throne, um, got to doing Karu and soloed and. Ironically, he got a blue fusion rifle as a drop, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, which is amazing. extremely ironic, and people are now <laughs> thinking that you have to use that fusion rifle to kill him. No, of okay. course, that would actually be hilarious if that <laughs> was. Oh my right. And uh, so basically, nothing happened, and everybody is thinking this is going to be the fifteenth wish. It's going to end the curse. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Um, and they didn't really know what this what this lore entry was, and it's basically. Uh, a book of lies. So <laughs> it's basically a well, debate is pretty much what it was. And I mean, uh, do you th- yeah, do you what? think there's nothing there? Or because yeah. like Bungie responded, congratulated, and mm-hmm. yeah. people sort of are saying Bungie wasn't prepared, but they say, look, the claims, mm. you know, it made in truth to power were ambiguous. Now that they've been put to the test, the curse is yet to be broken. Mm-hmm. So the way, I don't know, the way that said and some of the fun they were having by reading, sort of putting Sabbath in, 
um, quotes in between that there seems to be still a secret to this from the way they wrote it. But what do you think? Yeah. So um, I, I did a lot of researching on this and whatnot and talked to a lot of people um, in the in the post that yeah, right? in the post that DMG, um, I think it was DMG that posted on the Bungie yeah. website, um, the extra words that were in there in parentheses, um, they read out to say, I am Savathun Ravenous. I have set the snare and baited the trap. Is victory so easy, hero? I am the final finality, the reward. I am the true ending. This is another gift. Your strength is my strength. Your victory is my victory. My jaws are wide and I am waiting. The wait is long, but I am ceaseless. Mm -hmm. I am Savathun, fulfilled, delighted, expectant. So basically, Savathun wanted this to happen because mm -hmm. every time we killed Dueling Karu, she gets stronger. So and we just had a super strong guardian exactly. kill Dueling Karu. And <laughs> someone got really fat from strength. So uh, if Savathun comes out as a raid boss and we can't kill her, I'm blaming Bagel. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> <Stag> blame Bagel. <laughs> um, so something did happen, but a lot of people are are looking at the why is why isn't the the Dreaming City curse broken? And it never said anywhere that it was going to break the curse. Hmm. It just said to unlock the true ending of the Dreaming City, um, and we don't know what that is. So uh, I definitely think something happened. We just have no idea. And I think it was pretty mm -hmm. crazy because um, DMG uh, changed his Twitter bio picture um, to basically a taken picture of DMG. And he was like posting all of these really funny, um, like just crazy tweets um, yep. as if he was taken. And he was like, I think they were ready. I, I think they expected this. Maybe not this early, but they definitely expected um, it this season for somebody to hit 999 oh, yeah. and yeah. then go and do that. Yeah. They, they, they know the community is pretty crazy. Yeah. They had to be following yeah. uh, that. St I personally think they were following that stat. Like, I just feel like they've oh, got yeah. that up on their dashboard, and they're like, what is the max power? And they've been watching, saw somebody was easily climbing. So yep. they had right. to be prepared. All right. It's funny, though. Modern tryhard. Give up. Uh, oh. Got to give it up for the keck uh, that he threw out. Um if you hopefully you know that meme of the uh, I believe it's a Mexican Keck comedian w. interview and he's like laughing and it goes way back, and which is Keck W on on Twitch and stuff. But um, oh my God, he sent it out so fast. <laughs> you gotta watch it if you have it. <laughs> if you have not watched it, it's hilarious. Watch it. it is it is really funny. funny. The Guardians hit nine nine nine, and then nothing. <laughs> they thought something was gonna happen, but nothing happened. And then he does the the funny laugh. And, the, the, his laugh is now, so intoxicating, man. Now you got Swetsuko looking for the fifteenth wish. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it was just so that was good. amazing. Please, it's please perfect. watch it. <laughs> all right, question time. Uh, all right, uh, first one's from Anubis. Uh, did you know that all Destiny raids can be done with six people? <laughs> You're welcome. Easy Street from here on out. You know, so I saw this and I was like, what if Bungie legitimately just never told us that there were six man activities and we assumed raids were three man because strikes were three man and patrols were three man? Yeah. We'd be gods right now. They nerfed yeah, us true. by make, allowing us to do six. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Though. And you're like, wait a second. He got Good you. Now you can put more people in here. <laughs> Good old Anubis. That is crazy. I'm going to have to give that a shot. I mean,. Um, I spent many hours in Argos because I thought you could only go in there by yourself and kill them. Uh, so <laughs> knowing that I can have five more people, that should that should take a little load off my chest, right. load off my shoulders, and make it a little bit easier. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to let Glad know that we can bring four more people with us next time we do a raid. <laughs> uh, Justice Beaver twenty three says, "Does anyone like the hunt mechanic in Iron Banner? Also, how do you feel about power level being enabled in Iron Banner?" Mm. I have like a what? non opinion on the hunt mechanic, honestly. Like, the I don't know. Really... where you take over the all lockdown. Three zones. Yeah, you lock yeah. it down, and then for a certain amount of time, you go. So it's, I like it blast. because Survival it gives you a reason rules. to lock down all three zones. Before yeah. that, it was against your interest in doing that, right? Yeah, you just go B, C, B, C, yeah. D, C, yeah, you, or whatever. You get it was, two yeah. zones and then spawn camp. That's good. Point. With the hunt mechanic, there's a reason to actually take over that third zone. Oh, yeah, I don't mind. And I think it. it's fun. I don't mind it personally. And I think Iron Banner has always been light level for me. In fact, I thought it was weird mm -hmm. in year one of D2 when they took that away. I was like, what? Yeah. Why would you die? Like, mm -hmm. makes no sense. So, yeah. Yeah. I, would, uh, I think it's cool. it's a cool thing that people get rewarded for, you know, playing a lot, basically, and grinding out those levels. And there's a place in PvP that that makes a difference. And that's fun. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. It could be frustrating if you're not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, Redeem says, mm-hmm. what does Redeem mean to you as a brand? Also, who's your favorite member of Redeem? <laughs> Uh, favorite member is definitely gigs and uh, what does it mean to me Um, well redeem is is really it's not just a team it's actually a family which is pretty crazy because like we're all basically brothers like um, when we all went to gcx together we all got a a massive house and there's like i think there's like 14 or 16 of us i don't remember Um, and it was just such a good time the entire time meeting them for the first time and a lot of people that uh, have online friends when you meet them for the first time um, you, you guys definitely know what I'm talking about. And these are guys that um, I talked to. Wish I did, man. Wish I did. <laughs> Still yet to meet a friend. And if you don't have friends, well, maybe eventually you'll know what I'm talking about. Nice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, growing up in, in this community and then seeing who Redeem was and everything and the stuff that they did, um, it was definitely a, a goal that I set for myself. And I definitely didn't think that I would get to where where I am now. Um as quickly at least and uh yeah it, it's it's pretty amazing they're all awesome dudes they're all extremely good at the game very knowledgeable and uh like i said they're all pretty much brothers if they they ever ask me for anything i'm there for them if i ask them for anything they'll be, they'll be there for me as well so um as far as a brand i hope it's i hope it's something that we can continue to grow and we can uh, make a bigger name in the in the community um even bigger than we we are right now and hopefully we can continue to look uh, or have people look up to us on the things that we do. Um, Cause we do these challenges to show people that, Hey, we can do it with two people. You can do it with six. Um, so give it a shot for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just want to keep being, uh, making a name for ourselves essentially. So. Uh, I like this question. Brain tacular says I only get to play maybe two to three hours a week. What do you all suggest I focus on in terms of priorities for PVE content? It's a little more difficult. Um, yeah, I always focus on the stuff that's like story based, like uh, Eris, the Eris stuff right now is mm-hmm. once a week. You know, there's like the new kind of Eris quest to, you know, dispel one of her ghosts, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like doing that stuff because that progresses the story and it's interesting to see the fire. It's team not more. as repetitive as. Sure. Yeah. yeah that I, would, I would say it really depends on what type of player you are. Um, like if you like the story, if you like that aspect of destiny, if you like the lore, if you like things like that, then definitely work on things that would progress that and, you know, get you caught up on that. Um, if you're more so asking, how can I optimize my time power level wise, then you would typically want to do the easiest activities that get you the powerful drops, pinnacle drops. Um, if you have friends, if you have people that you game with often, um, I mean, the raid is always an amazing experience and you get five other friends with you and just go have fun. I mean, that's what gaming is. You'd have fun with friends. So it all depends on what type of player you are. Um, uh, it's it's hard to answer that question, I would say. Uh, there's there's so yeah. much to do two to three hours a week. It, it's difficult to get it all done. Yeah, and technically, I was going to say to add that, technically you can get powerful rewards for all of the majority of things right now. You could play PvP, get power rewards. You can play Gambit, get power rewards. You can play Strikes, get power rewards. You could do Nightfalls now with queuing and get those done, yep. get power drops. And then just like Briar, you guys were saying, like you can go and uh, do some story content on the moon and get power drops. So what are you most interested in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we should ask Mr. Pow per hour because he knows how to optimize the power <laughs> yeah. per hour. No, two hours. Been at, oh, PPH. What are we, what are we powering with the, with the two hours? Depends on where you're at in your power climb. <laughs> Otherwise, make a spreadsheet, like I said. I saw the spreadsheet. I was like, Contact that's pretty fancy. Ren for his spreadsheet. He'll send it to you. That's right. And help you optimize. Yeah. Well, it's fine. To, to clarify again, I made it because people were talking about you got to do tier ones and then you should do tier twos and then three. And I would, kept trying to understand it. And people were trying to explain it. I'm like, I just don't get the math. So I made a spreadsheet. And then I realized, I was like, oh, basically all you want to do is get a whatever tier of potential power you want it to take you over the next level. Mm -hmm. So if you have a chance at like a tier three, you should grab it if it's going to bring you over for sure. Um, Where other people were just like, no, don't save it for later, right? And I was like, I don't know, the math didn't make sense to me until I laid it out. So (laughs) anyway, 
It's really not that hard to get to 950, though. It's just pure mm. luck and playing just every week. Buy, you, <laughs> buy your friend sheet from your local Barnes and Noble. Yeah, just get- <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, Rigo the Dingo says, Congrats to 250 podcast episodes. So he did the math 89 oh, episodes with that. PD and 160 ones with DCP. Wow. Oh. 250 oh, total. That's a lot. Post that in a spreadsheet. Easy to track. Yeah. Right? (laughs) French E 2.0 coming to the He also asked sheets. (laughs) What is the weirdest and most unexpected thing that happened in the 250 episodes? Weirdest thing. The weirdest thing. I can't remember his name, but one dude came on and got Ambone. Oh. I think he took down a full bottle of like JD or something. (laughs) Was it Vodka? Dot. I don't Dot. remember what it was. Dot, Dot drank totally a lot. Yeah, Dot alcohol. got absolutely <laughs> hammered on the show. Oh wow! Dot. I actually debated Dot because I was Look drinking. A, I was drinking a cup of tea, but it was like a clear cup. And he was uh-huh. like, "What are you drinking?" I was like, "Whiskey, obviously." Oh, oh my god! And he's like, and he oh, took it as like a challenge. That. He's like, Let's "You're drinking go. a full cup." <laughs> All right. Okay. Fine. All right. We're going there. All right. We're doing I this. I found it freaking hilarious. It was yeah. so funny. We did oh change up a few things after that episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we got a couple of like uh, emergency call signs in case yeah. we need to. <laughs> Eject. Oh, we. <laughs> We lost their signal. Uh, man, I don't know yeah. what happened. It looks like they got kicked out of Discord. That didn't happen, though. Or yeah. someone's like, uh, is it okay if I drink? You're like, yes, but not an entire bottle of whis- whiskey yeah. or vodka or wine. Like a <laughs> beer is fine. A bottle of beer is fine. That's right. I'm not here to be your parent, but. <laughs> that was got to, honestly. What is that, Order 66? <laughs> oh, um, Cherry yeah, Papa yes. reminded me that when Pope fell off his chair. That was, that was a good moment. That was amazing. What? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he Sounds did a full awesome. fall. Could I get uh, a that? Slid right off. For a oh, that's available. There was also... Oh, please. Somebody <laughs> send it to there was me. Also for our, a friend. I'm sure, I'm sure if somebody has it in chat. It was also our first episode where uh, Skype wouldn't work and then Discord wouldn't work. And then we're mm-hmm. like, well... First episode of DCP, by the way, not Plant Dust. Yes, oh, first no. episode. Uh, uh, we decided, we're like, all right, I guess PlayStation Chat. <laughs> oh, my God. So we ended up using PlayStation Chat for the very first episode That's for right. audio. because. So this was before Destiny was on PC, so it's like not yeah. as crazy, but we True. were like, yeah, what else can we do? It's the only the only option we have is PlayStation Chat, yeah. which yeah. sounds awful. It did. It sounded but. bad. Um, I got to say, one of my favorite moments of the entire run of DCP and PD was the night that Holtzman got really hammered. <laughs> he he went out to dinner and came back and he was just drunk, right? <laughs> and he was hilarious. I gotta say, he was like the most fun drunk I've ever been around. <laughs> oh yeah, that's funny. Speaking of drunk, Holtzman is awesome. Uh, speaking of challenge accepted. <laughs> speaking of In this clip, I'll meet you there, Briar. Well. I- Speaking of getting drunk, uh, yeah. Briar yeah. spilling beer on Watts's table, and then <laughs> oh <laughs> oh yeah, no, or carpet. Well, the carpet well, it was right? the table, well, a bunch both. of electronics on both. the table, and then the carpet. <laughs> there was just all sorts of stuff to spill beer on right there. <laughs> That's true. That was the the moment of panic when the it froze too because we lost the signal because we like lift the laptop up and oh my goodness. Yeah. If you look at that clip that was just posted of Pope falling off his chair, everyone looks so young. Everyone looks like a baby. Really? I guess. Yeah. Spe- especially Episode blesses. 23. <laughs> oh, my <You> God. Just... <laughs> yeah, right? What's everyone, happened to us? <laughs> everyone looks young, full of life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, that chair. That's a good one. Well. <laughs> he does. He falls right off that fucking chair. He, he just falls it right off. <laughs> I think he was trying to squeeze out a fart. <laughs> I think He's what trying it was. to get off the chair. Yeah. Uh, gamer says, "Would you guys be opposed to letting controller users on PC have an option to disable aim assist to get mouse and keyboard like recoil?" 
I don't think that would have the effect that you'd be looking for. No, it wouldn't feel <laughs> yeah. good. I think it'd make it harder. Right. Yeah. It's incredibly difficult to aim with controller. A controller sticks. with no aim assist. With yeah. zero aim assist, like actual zero. Because a lot of the time when games have, you can turn it off, there's still a little bit there. It's just a lot yeah. less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's just hard to be pixel perfect like that versus like a mouse. Um, I mean, I I guess it wouldn't the hurt option. to turn it on, but I yeah. would assume as a game designer, you're like, why would anybody want this right, without yeah. any forgiveness whatsoever? Right. Yeah. If you've ever played a game that has team shooting, like as a you know, like it's there, but there's usually no aim assist when you try and shoot your own teammate. See how difficult that is. It's actually really difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the option is fine if people want it. Um, but I would say if you want, if you're on PC already and you want to have no aim assist, you might as well just get used to using mouse and keyboard at that point. There's still aim assist on mouse and keyboard. There is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bull well, bullet magnetism, magnetism versus not aim assist. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, right. it, but it's similar. It's similar, but yeah, that's your bullets well, you, kind of your aim doesn't in. actually get pulled. Aim assist exactly. literally, yeah, yeah. literally Correct, pulls your yeah. aim or like yeah. mm -hmm. reticle. Yeah, yeah, moving like gravitate towards it. Yeah, uh -huh. or it it like slows it down when you move over something that's mm -hmm. sticky. Like it affects that. But mm -hmm. uh, Lord Jack says, Chevy, what is the hardest what? thing you've done in Destiny that you thought couldn't be done before you did it? Thought couldn't be done. Yeah, what, what's the um, hardest thing you've ever done? Probably the hardest challenge overall. Um, I knew it could be done, but it was actually, I knew it was very, very difficult, was probably solo Argos on a Hunter. Uh, there mm. was just so many factors. And uh, Hunter, there's just no survivability. And the, the damage was quite tight. And that was probably, I deleted my Hunter when I got it. Uh, <laughs> I was deleted like, your Hunter? I deleted my Hunter. After I the told, most challenging I challenge? I wow. told Chad, I was like, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm deleting my Hunter. I was just like, um, but I think that was probably the most difficult. I think all around it took about 150 hours. Um, and it was the only challenge that once I finally got towards like the end, the home stretch, if you will, I, I actually started to, okay, you know, I got to clutch up here. I got to, you know, I got a little nervous, I guess you could say. Mm. Um, and that usually doesn't happen too often. So probably that. Um I mean, two Titan Galron was another thing, and then two Hunter uh, GOS uh, Sanctified Mind. So you deleted your Hunter three. and then made a new one in honor of your previous yeah. Hunter. See, what I didn't tell everybody is I was going to do that anyways because it was a male Hunter. Okay, gotcha. So uh, uh, the female characters look much better, and uh, people would always make fun of me because I had a uh, male characters. <laughs> so it would make fun of you. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at the Titan, it's so bulky. <laughs> it is. And it, it, it looks really nice. Like when you put when you put a good gear set on, it just looks really or nice. A pumpkin. I know some people like that uh, pumpkin, <laughs> yeah. I remember the, the good old pumpkin uh -huh. uh, last year. Uh, pumpkin's Aren't back, you glad right? you yeah. can do that, Tiff? Oh, it's back? Oh yeah. I got a two point yeah. It's almost wait a minute. Hold up. Did you just say orange you glad? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen if anybody's paying attention. Did you just double pun? <laughs> Oh god. That was honestly I said it. I'm just like it's kind of deliriously hungry right now. And I was like, actually, I wish I could take that back. <laughs> but I couldn't, so I just was real. I'm not quiet. gonna let that slide. <laughs> Dang it, Briar. <laughs> oh, busted boy. Uh Sparty for you says, Can Tefty describe how it feels to not have the fashion emblem, unlike the great and wonderful Watts? Mm. Oh, All right. Interesting. I feel lots of uh respect and uh I have <laughs> Lots of admiration, admiration for my fellow podcaster of achieving this great achievement of having the fashion <laughs> emblem. How I, do you feel that speech. Aloha has the emblem? Well, Ooh. Aloha's Canadian, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I would have gone to Hawaiian. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's definitely Hawaiian, not Canadian. Weird. Uh, Aloha thinks Canadian bacon's real bacon, so... Yeah, you know, that goes out the window. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's that's an odd opinion. That triggered me. <laughs> like, that's a piece of ham, but yeah. whatever. It's clearly yeah. ham. It's not hey, in the same I'm... bucket as bacon. It's just saying. Oh. No. <laughs> also, the person who asked the question, Sparty, uh, yeah. also has the emblem. That's great, Sparty. Oh, I'm wow. really happy wow. for you, Sparty. Are you happy? I am. 
I'm very yeah. happy for you guys for achieving <laughs> ultimate fashion pinnacle wow. levels of destiny hood. He's seething. Look at him. Yeah. He's I'm really happy for you guys. He's, he's great. Like, oh, that, that was a lot. sweating. <laughs> just, exactly. you know, just gleeful. Glee. That's the, that's the, the, the word. <laughs> Uh, Wayne says, what makeup car would you have to buy to force your family to disown you? In a real life scenario. Yeah. Maybe a I mean, that'll be the joke part of it. <laughs> Maybe a golf cart. And that's my main car. It's my yeah. main transport. That was family would car, see, would Dude, when I retire, I'm definitely going to get a golf no, cart. I'm going to throw a technicality <laughs> flag on that one. Watch. You can't drive that on the road. So it's not I can if you I can want. In, in Florida. Just don't get caught. Right? <laughs> don't get caught. You can't in Florida. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. Around neighborhoods and stuff. Like if you live in around uh, the golf course that you community. live on. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I got plans. <laughs> Let's see. I plan on having a golf course and also a store in That's my true. community. Mm, nice. That I can drive my golf cart around. Yeah. It's acceptable. Yeah. Um when I was in my teens, my father was married to a Jewish guy who was absolutely convinced that Mercedes. Well, I think this is actually true. I think this is technically true. Is Mercedes made the ovens that they, you know, they exterminated people in in World War II. So he had a vehement hatred oh, for Mercedes and BMW yeah. and Volkswagen. So any German car, he would have definitely been super pissed off if I bought it and then drove it around. And this is where you say, "Is this is where I thought this was the part where Bryce says, so I bought one and no. picked him up in it, and he was a little upset." No, <laughs> nope. Yeah, I can't really think of a car that my family would be upset over. Shamed of you. Shamed. Yeah. yeah. Same. Yeah. They've owned us. Like that's that's a good reason, Briars, but I can't think of anyone where maybe like if, if I showed up in a minivan, I'd personally be disappointed in myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You disown yourself. <laughs> yeah. In that situation. I could see Briar in a Fiat. A that'd, Fiat. That'd be, yeah. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be an interesting one. I'd rock a Fiat. <laughs> Geo Metro. <laughs> oh, my roommate in college had a Geo Metro. It's a little th three cylinder convertible. Uh, that thing was actually <laughs> fun as hell. It was a convertible Metro? Uh huh. Whoa. It was a three cylinder car. It was a convertible Metro. And oh my God, it was slow. Yeah. But it go went around corners fast. <laughs> oh, I just realized that answer, it already happened to me. Uh, my car got <laughs> oh, hit by a, a bulldozer. Uh, Chevrolet. Oh no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. How did it get actually get bulldozer? And were you in it? No, I was fine. Okay. Uh, parked goodness. and a bulldozer slid down the hill here in oh, San Francisco, nice. and the shovel. Sl it was the bulldozer one was on the back of a trailer, by the way, and the shovel from the bulldozer slammed into the back of my car and like peeled Jeez. open the trunk. Oh it my god! Looked like Zeus hit it with a baseball bat. <laughs> oh, I was like god. broke at the time. <laughs> Working at IGN uh, my first year, you know, and had no money and uh, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, I just kept, you know, a little bit of insurance money because I needed like a bed and some clothes. And I drove that car around with the like with all trunk all messed up. up and it would fill up with water too. It start, eventually oh, no. rainwater started getting in and I would scoop it out with like a half gallon. Oh, like, it was so ghetto. Thieves make so much sense. Bad. Yeah. Why yeah. Frank Fran is freaking out about the water on the ship yeah. now we know oh, it's a scene thing. you're right I'm like traumatized <laughs> it was super like fight clubby ghetto i mean i told myself it was fight club cool but it was super lame <laughs> uh so yeah i think if my family had actually like been able to like come out and see that often they'd be like this is this is despicable like you're not how much really, do you need a car san francisco did you really how much them? what you need a car if you live in San Francisco. Well, back then, you know, it's not like you had Ubers and stuff. So, yeah, you absolutely needed it. So I drove it to work every day. Yeah, they had the BART, and that was it, right? Rain and all. Yeah, and, like, getting it would have taken me so much longer. To, it took me, like, you know, 15 minutes to get to work. If I was taking municipal transportation then, it probably would have been, like, 45 minutes to, yeah, an hour even, depending Oof. on my route. Uh, Dreadnought anyway. says, civilization has collapsed. And since you're the chosen one, oh, you're granted a one terabyte flash drive to store information of your choice for the next generation of humans. 
So you can pick anything from the early stages of the universe to now. What's on your flash drive? Wow. How about instructions um, on how to build a computer? Full so terabyte you can read of porn. It? <laughs> full terabyte Wait, of porn. That's not going to work. Porn. Yeah. yeah. I'm with Fran full on this terabyte. one. Full terabyte. Full terabyte. From uh, many decades and yeah, times. Yeah. Just, Vintage 1920s porn. <laughs> I feel like they'd be the most used of the flash drives. Yeah, somebody's going to steal it. Because, you know, you, yeah, otherwise you got like <laughs> art and history and knowledge. Like, how often do we go to the library? Just yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody's going to read this flash drive anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, like my favorite that... Netflix shows. Mm. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Music. Like a cons- yeah. tough Music. choice, but you might. Yeah. Is it boring if I say the current medical history so we can just recreate our medical science up to where we left? Right. Do you think it a whole terabyte health, is going to hold it? forward knowledge, Watts. Yeah. Would a terabyte hold it? I was going to say, I, yes. I feel like that's a lot. If it's in Notepad, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have no videos on there. Gonna no, no videos. Space. No, you don't need videos. No videos. Just like, yeah, you add this thing with this thing, and that's how you make the the cure-all drug. I would just picture him <laughs> playing like Fallout 5 right now and walking up to a terminal and finding... Watts's one terabyte drive and be like, okay, the complete history of <laughs> of uh, human health. And then, oh, look, Tefty's got all this porn. Look at this. <laughs> one terabyte. <laughs> I rest my case. Uh, I will say, I will say, isn't it kind of crazy that like we're making so much digital media in this day and age and that in 100 years, that's essentially going to be unreadable. Yeah, like if you you have like to obviously transfer it to new things. Yeah, and, and, which is a huge upkeep. And it's, it's extremely well. The harder ephemeral. transition, I think, was analog to digital. Right? How many people have VHS yeah. tapes or you know tape cassettes? That Those never things are going back. Those I think have like a hundred year life as well. So mm-hmm. like if you store it the even, tape, yeah, it's got a hundred year life. Like there's no long term storage. Yeah, for yeah. all this data. Yeah, I was gonna say we're all mm-hmm. already in a situation where if you have an old hard drive. Like an old like computer hard drive or even old um, cassette media is already in jeopardy, you know, and may not read or whatever. It's crazy. This is kind of a depressing story, but I was at a funeral a few weeks ago, and they had gone to this person's house and found this shoebox filled with pictures, and they were looking at all the pictures at the at the you know party afterward, and I was thinking to myself, oh my god. All our pictures exist on phones that have passwords. So if somebody were to die, those pictures are gone, right? Mm -hmm. They're just dead. Yeah. So like we we actually started a system of trying to print out the pictures that are important to us because, Mm -hmm. you know, if they're on a phone or a computer or saved to iCloud, your iCloud account, they're gone. They're they don't exist. No, I think about that one a lot, actually, as we take so many photos, which is amazing. We do. Unless you share it on social media, it's just gone. And we haven't yeah. actually experienced what you're talking about. I think about it a lot. Like, I have a ton of digital photos I've downloaded and never printed. And um, they're even only – they're backed up once, and even that terrifies me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I guarantee you, yeah, you're right. 15, 20 years from now, some of us are going to be kicking ourselves like, oh, I should have just, like – Printed even low res printed some stuff, you know, and yeah, you, know, you got to figure that out. You're like, put it yeah. in the cloud, and suddenly the cloud goes away. You're like, damn you, cloud, come back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely an old man yelling at the cloud. I love yeah. that. <laughs> no, cloud. <laughs> yeah. You were supposed to be also, secure. <laughs> back up your stuff off site. Get one of those services. They they cost that's like the $10. cloud, man. That's the cloud. Get one of those services that backs up your stuff because it is heartbreaking to lose is, like man. data like that, like family stuff photos, you've or everything. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. of it, all of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is that was real. That was an uncharacteristic briar right there. <laughs> uh, Dreadnought says you will be awarded one hundred thousand dollars cash if you successfully get kicked out of Walmart in under five uh, minutes. You can. Cannot physically or verbally attack anybody. What would you do? Dodgeball. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Naked. I like it. Yeah, what if I just start naked is good. Streaking, yeah. Right? yeah. What if what if you what if take it up a notch? You get the bikes oh. that are in Walmart. Yes. Uh-huh. 
naked. Ride a bike Ooh. around Walmart, butt ass naked. Uh huh. Think See, you got to be you naked. Out. I, I think, think you weren't I naked. I think the more interesting challenge be. is to stay in there naked for more than five minutes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Oh, yeah. Now, now we're, we're talking. talking. <laughs> yeah. That's the true challenge. Oh, there's a challenge. Yep. Did I tell you guys the story of how I got kicked out of a bar? I have the, the world record to get getting kicked out of a bar. Uh uh-uh. uh. I've this is I new to me. No. We this were gonna be good. Me and a buddy were drinking all day. Uh but we're but- watching college football and basically splitting a 30 pack of beer. We ran out of beer, a 30 pack. <laughs> <laughs> you were having 15 beers a piece, am I yes. catching you? Okay. We decided to walk to the bar that was near his bar. house where they had they had darts. The first thing we do is walk up to the bar, buy two beers, walk over to the dartboard, and I immediately pick up a dart, turn my back to the dartboard, throw it at the dartboard, hit the dartboard. (laughs) The bartender sees me, walks directly over to us, puts our money back on the table, takes our (laughs) beers, and says, get the fuck out of here. I did not even have a sip of my beer before I got kicked out of that, like, this, that bar. These guys are effed up. Man. These guys are going to kill somebody with their yeah. backwards darts. But you hit the, you did, I mean, you did hit the dartboard. I hit, I hit the dartboard. I board. feel like that gets you a free beer. Right. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. In Briar's way, that's No exactly. ill will turn that bartender, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he made the right call. Yeah. And that was just yep. last week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Taylor Hardy says, you take the DCP crew to Port- Portillo's. Oh, this one's Ooh. specifically for Fran. You take Ooh. the DCP crew to Portillo's for the first time. He's not going to. What are you ordering I for totally that? totally would. <laughs> what is Portillo's? Uh, yeah, hopefully everybody knows Portillo's is uh, the Chicago eatery that specializes in like hot dogs, Italian beef, and pretty much that. Uh, so it's, it's amazing if you love that stuff. I didn't think you'd want us to be seen oh, with no. you in public. No, of what I would love Outside that. Of Especially if we're going to Portillo's. I'll take anybody to Portillo's, Watts, if I'm being honest. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what am I getting? Yeah, it's like it's hard to answer because I would get you everything. So if you don't limit me, <laughs> I would make you each try. Yeah, I'd make I'd be like, you got to get a hot dog and you have to get an Italian beef. But then there's like there's ways to get those things. Like, what do you mm-hmm. want on it? And right. is it is it wet? Is it dry? And all this other stuff. But um, but basically, I would make you eat one of them. Always both. go wet. And they're yeah, <laughs> no, 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 you're ruining it. <laughs> but uh, it's Creamy have any of you dogs? had Portillos? No. What no. about Italian beef, Chicago style yes. Italian beef? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I've had Chicago style Italian beef. Yeah, really like good. Italian beef. It's like it's not a French dip, but it's close. If you've had French dip, mm-hmm. I've had French dip. See, now we have to go. There is one in um. Down by Anaheim, forever down there, by Disneyland, or San Diego has one. It's really not good. up here. Are you yeah. are you br- taking us to Disney? I'll go. Sure, Fran. No Wait, problem. Wait, when did you? I will turn. Sign me up to Disney 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 if now. you insist. I, I'm, in, I'm in. Like, Let's wow. I'm in. Wow. Let's make it January so we can go to the new Star Wars ride. <laughs> All right. Ooh, yeah, wait, I was Star in Wars. for like a couple hot dogs no, you for you guys. Star Wars ride with us? <laughs> yeah. Maybe share some fries, but now I'm like taking you all and like you go to you know, fast pass $250 tickets. I if only we could fly have first matching class. shirts so we don't <laughs> lose Briar, that would be great. You make a strong point. <laughs> you have to put like Christmas lights in his beard just so like, can keep track of where he is at all times. All right. Uh, let's see here. Dan says. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> With Death Stranding <laughs> launching tomorrow, would you, who would you rather follow into the unknown? Eris Morn or Sam Bridges? Norman Reedus's character. You know, I think Eris would be more of a party. You know, it could be a good time. Oh, she's yeah, she's take got a party some... written all over her. Oh, she's going to take <laughs> us to. Is it Crying Halloween? Black tears. If it's Halloween, Eris is going to take me to the best spooky houses and the best spooky experiences. She's probably going to leave me there to die, but it'll be exhilarating trying to escape. Eris is that lady that you say, hey, how you doing? And she fucking tells you. <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect. She's the conversation that you get into and you can't find your way out fast enough. <laughs> True. I don't know. Sam Bridges doesn't look like a ton of fun either, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, he's very cool. He doesn't quiet. even let you look at his crotch. So, I mean, uh, Eris yeah. lets us so he's look wherever it. we want. She never punches Probably. me. All right, yeah. at one point, That's Eris. Point. <laughs> can, inspect <it. laughs> can inspect the crotch. Good. All now right. we know what Watts does with friends at parties. So, all right. <laughs> it's true. Plan accordingly. Dress accordingly, Watts. everybody. 
Oh man, I would I would go with Eris though, assuming there are mm. other people because it would just be like, who's your weird <laughs> friend? Like there'd be so much conversation <laughs> happening about you and your weird friend. We're like, this is a, Sam Bridges. Wait, it, it's so like quiet. It, wait, was the yeah. question a full party is following one of these guys into the void? No, I thought it was just. Did you. I misunderstand? <laughs> oh. I thought it was taking one of them to a party. No. <laughs> No, okay, we kind of made up the party. Thing. That sounds more interesting. <laughs> All right, well, it's we basically made up this it's, do you want to I think, follow? Oh, it's because Watts says she knows how to party. I got confused. Do you want to follow <laughs> Sam or Eris into the post apocalyptic, crazy, spooky North America? Look, Eris's landscape. fire team does not have a strong history of survivability. Yeah, uh, so I wouldn't but count Eris on her. does. So, but Eris oh, does, yeah, she did something right, but maybe yeah. she just like did her spook talk and zipped on out. <laughs> Yeah, I think Eris has got plot armor. Was so we don't spooky. necessarily have such a thing. <laughs> what if she was so spooky that the hive were like, yeah, whatever, it's just fine. Just keep her here. She's into <laughs> yeah. worms. It's a bit weird, but it's fine. Yeah, it probably would take Sam Bridges in that instance. He's real quiet, and he can, knowing what I also, know Also, he's got a stranding, motorcycle, and that makes him like 10% more sexy. Well... <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm thinking the journey. Do you want somebody who's going to tell you about their dead friends all the time? Or do you want somebody's going to? Or do you want to ride yeah, bitch on Norman Reedus's motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when he ran out of gas? Though they're not going to have gas stations. It's electric. Wood. Eris oh, it's can electric. teleport me <laughs> everywhere. She has powers. Yeah, mm, true. That's true. I would definitely pick Eris. Yeah, but does she have a motorcycle? Weird chance though. <laughs> she probably has a broom. You got a rock, yeah, man. She probably got a sparrow. <laughs> she does have a rock. She got a rock. You don't know the price you <laughs> pay rock. for those like little seances that she holds. You know, so what do you need? What do you need a motorcycle for when you could just teleport? That's a good you point. Just make a teleport and just maybe it's exhausting for uh -huh. her. She only got one teleport per day, oh, and you man. don't have to go through like seventeen cutscenes to teleport with Eris. So yeah, <laughs> it's a bit faster. That's right. right. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. Blaney McBladerson says, if you walk into a public bathroom with a friend and you both have to do some business in there, when should you stop talking to them and when should you start again? You stop the when you go different the if there are other people in the bathroom. Isn't it kind number of weird? one or two? Yeah, ah. is it one or two? It kind of depends. I can say yeah. number two. As soon as you Oof. go in the stall, you're cutting the conversation. Yeah, no. As soon as you, as soon as you uh, go in the stall, kind of a chatty yeah. Kathy in there. I'll huh? tell you how I do it. <laughs> Keep on talking. The first person to go in the stall, if they're, in, I'm like, I'm out. You're going too. I'm not gonna uh -huh. sit down next to you and be like, no. Look at your. I mean, angles. we both know we're in there. <laughs> we're mid conversation. No. Doesn't matter. Keep talking. Are you yeah. poop shy? For me, I have to. I have <laughs> yeah, to have, I just don't. I have to have full concentration yeah. when I'm doing my business. You know, full concentration. Really? Yeah, absolutely, man. I gotta have. So full... somebody starts talking to you, just like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to poop. Can you uh, hold that thought, and just, we'll get back? I'm just to ignoring them. Just it's just it's the ignore. it's the it's the alone time. You know, yeah, you're having yeah. a little break. Oh, you're having man. a break from the party. I'll be in there rolling up pieces of paper and throwing them oh, over. Oh, that's <laughs> so awful. You should be doing your business. You shouldn't be playing pranks. This is not a 100% concentration thing for me. This is like yeah. maybe 10%. Yeah, I don't the need the concentration. My attention needs to be fulfilled. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's not about concentration. It's that I don't want to share that moment with anybody that I know. <laughs> How about when you're sense. at a urinal? What about if you're standing at a urinal? Is it different? That's fine, but I don't want to like talk to you. <laughs> well, actually, it depends. No, it, depends. it does depend on the level of friendship. Yeah. If it's like an earlier friendship, then I'm like, no, this is weird. But if I know someone yeah. really well, I'll just keep talking to them. Yeah. I would agree. In my that. younger days, when I was a bit of a rap scallion, I used to look over and say, oh, that's smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> You're so obnoxious, dude. Wow. Never following you anywhere near us. <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. That's the worst, man. <laughs> oh, that was you just mess with him, though. You look over yeah. like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then you start throwing paper at him. You're like, "Where'd you get paper from? Where? When your hands? You're supposed to be doing other things right now." Oh man. Uh, Sam says you get to set up a one v one fighting game style match between you and a Destiny character, and, and a character from another franchise. Oh boy. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Wait, between. Say that again. You get to set up a 1v1 <laughs> fighting game style match between a Destiny character and a character from another franchise. Who do you pick? Okay. Okay. Destiny character. Mm. 
Well, now I'm going to go Sam Bridges versus Harris Moore, and we're going to have this oh, last question. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we're going to see. That's a good going idea. Down. Just, just line up perfectly. I don't have my uh, bunny on Norm either. Even if he does have more. And it was side. only other right. characters from video games. What, yeah. Tefty, Tefty, what if we do Let's Go Freelancers versus Guardians? Elf? No, Alf. but he's not a video game character. Alf but he's oh, he's, he's got to be in a video game. <laughs> I was trying to think. I don't think he 100% no. had to have been on some cool sort of spot. Nintendo cartridge. He's no. got to be. I don't remember I any Alf video Alf was games. Me. I'm oh, looking it up be. right now. Yeah, we got to look it up. Alf ah, yeah, video let's game. go, Freelancers. I don't think it exists, <laughs> man. Oh, Alf <laughs> Sega Master System game. It exists. No. Alf the game. Came out in 1989. Alf is a video game character. You kill me. <laughs> All right, I'm going. I'm going. Sweeper Bot versus Alf. <laughs> it's funny. I wanted to pick Alf, and I was like, he wasn't in a game, so I wrote it off. You know? Oh, thank you, friend. Should have just Googled it, man. <laughs> so, whatever reason, I wanted to instantly choose Shax and Goku. Oh, okay. Mm, You're like in a real sport of the fight. Yeah, no idea why. Yeah. That those are just the first two names that came to my mind. I think that'd be pretty I'm intense. definitely choosing Zavala because I want to see that bitch get his ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> who's he getting beat by? Well, who's going to do the job then? I don't know. That's the question. Oh. Uh, maybe Master Chief? Oh. Mm, it needs, to, really be, it needs to be ironic. That, right? Okay. Something ironic. Uh, hmm. Because Master Chief is uh, obvious. Of course he's going to kick his ass. Clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, you got your pick. Cool spot. Like uh, Fran said exactly. earlier, pretty much get the job done. <laughs> Mario? Oh, oh I want to see Mario beat. No, <laughs> Princess Peach. <Zach>. Okay. <laughs> Zavala versus uh, Princess Peach. Look, I just want to see Zavala get his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to oh. go with. Hmm. I already know the video game character. I just couldn't peg which Destiny character. I want to go up against it. Uh, I'm just going to have to go with train of thought. It's the Noid, okay? So obviously the Domino's Noid, everybody knows, right? Versus Ooh, Zer. Yeah. Ooh, I want to see those two go at it. Yeah, Zer versus the Noid. I don't think Zer can. He just <laughs> carries stuff around. I don't think the Noid can either, though. He's got so a lot of arsenal. The Noid will mess you up. <laughs> you He's got so? all those good exotics that he doesn't yeah. give us. What if, what if all the exotics he has access to? Then you yeah. know he's packing heat. Mm. What if he can wield them <laughs> whenever he wants? He's got all the galahorns. He's got he's... connections to the nine. So I Although mean... his will is not his mm. own. So what if someone's messing with him my and keeps switching his weapon? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's just something he says. And then he's like, ha, sank. Will's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Galahorn. Puppet pack round. Yeah, he probably yeah. He probably grows into some giant creature like uh, Oryx as well. Like, you don't know what he's up to. That guy's, he's crafty. Shifty. Yeah. Uh, fr Frozen Cigar says, "What's the weirdest dream you've ever had?" We don't need to talk about my dreams after what happened last time. I talked about my dreams, and you told me it wasn't normal to dream about murdering people murdering and people. hiding oh. it and being chased. What? So I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> hiding a body. <laughs> being scared don't look under the rug. Good God. <laughs> wow, so, so. Here we are. Yeah, you gotta have to check out. <laughs> uh, My doctor said I looked healthy, so I think I'm fine. Okay. Well, that was like a probably not a psychotherapist of any kind. Right? They asked me if I had any bad thoughts, and I said no. And they were like, okay. <laughs> "You lied to them." <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> also, a sociopath liar. Great. Add that to the uh, I, I used know. to have a dream um, that would happen. A, a reoccurring dream. You guys are probably familiar with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it would happen like for maybe a couple nights in a row and then it would go away for like a year and then it would come back. Mm. And this dream, I have no idea why, but I would get chased by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Ooh, uh, that's every scary. time, every time I escaped him, I wound up right back at the beginning. So I would like but and the weird thing is every time like I kept learning. So like I knew that I was about to encounter a Tyrannosaurus Rex and I would escape him because I would find ways to escape him. And then I would just re-encounter him. And every time it happened, I was like, okay, so that worked, but it didn't. What can I do different this time? And it would happen a lot of times and I had no idea why. Um, that, that is definitely 
one of the weirdest dreams that I've for had. Some for some reason, sure. I'm picturing your Tyrannosaurus Rex like you're doing this chase thing, and then he this one mm-hmm. time he spots you and he's playing a banjo. <laughs> you know, with his baby arms, you know, Tyrannosaurus, <laughs> and a baby a banjo. banjo. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Just, yeah I had a couple hat on. Maybe he's got like a to that one, too. actually. That I remember because so I had one that was similar to that in that things kept happening and then I had to figure out how to make it not happen or happen better. And I was on a train and someone wanted to kill me, like no matter what, these people were going to kill me. Mm -hmm. And um, they killed me once, I think, just by shooting me. And I was like, that was kind of burning and kind of painful. Don't know if I'm into that. And then I basically (laughs) would die over and over again. And the last one was being burned alive. And I was like, this is way in your dream. Yes, that happens all the time. Wow, whoa. But you don't wake up? No, not all the time. It's like like you start the level over. (laughs) Yeah, I respawn. Interesting. Wow. (laughs) Normal, yeah, Yeah. normal people would wake up once. (laughs) I don't know what's going on there. (laughs) She's like, oh, that really burnt. Ah, man. Uh, It's like, (laughs) oh, sucks. Let's go again. (laughs) It's kind of like a groundhog day. Yeah, Yeah. she totally got like a little groundhog day thing going on there. It was bad. Uh, in the uh, early 1980s, there was a TV show called Alice, uh, which took place at a place called Mel's Diner. And it was like the cast of Alice were all the people that worked in Mel's Diner. And I would have recurring nightmares that they were pirates and we were aboard a pirate ship and they had kidnapped me and lashed me to the mast. And I'd wake up screaming. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Really is this, is this why you're such show. a mean pirate? <laughs> I'm not a mean you're pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to get your different. revenge I'm laughing most of the time I'm a pirate <laughs> that's because you're a psychopath <laughs> you enjoy the pain of others I do that's true actually <laughs> I honestly can't remember any weird dreams like I I usually don't remember super weird dreams I actually saw fortune say in chat I had this spider dream recently and my watch tracked the the fact that like a giant spider leapt at me in the dream and I woke up <laughs> and later on I looked at the um the sleep tracker and my heart rate actually shot up. So I was like I thought that was really mm-hmm. interesting that I could see my heart yeah, rate jump to that. But like honestly I haven't had like a a recurring dream or some super strange mm-hmm. like what does that mean? Do you guys ever dream about the video games that you're playing a lot of? Yeah. yeah, I just mm. did recently about Death Stranding. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like I, it was, it was more just that general memory of you know, when you're half. It was more the half asleep dream, right? But I was mm-hmm. like losing cargo and picking it up, and like I because <laughs> I've done it so much and protecting that cargo. It. I remember actually waking up and being like, "Oh, I finally played that much in a row that I'm like, <laughs> about you can't it. stop <laughs> thinking about doing it." Yeah, that's. Funny. I've had a dream about Argos before, for sure. And in my dream, I was figuring out strats. And, no kidding. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I believe that. So That's like whenever I game. whenever I do encounters or anything, I'm always trying to think of ways to make it easier, make it better, whatever the case is. And um, it, when I was doing some of my Argos grinding, like I, it was just like always on my head. Like I, I would come up with spreadsheets to come up with damage and stuff, and I would literally sleep. And I remember one time I literally was like doing runs in my head while sleeping. Mm. And then I woke up and I was like, what the heck? (laughs) I'm playing even in my sleep. That's when you know you need a little break from whatever that was. (laughs) So I decided not to take a break and run it back. (laughs) You're like, well, it's fresh. I got to go. I I guess. All right. Three more questions and we'll wrap this up. Yeah. When I was Starting. nine, I did solve a Resident Evil puzzle in my sleep, so that was cool. Nice. Oh, that is cool. That's cool. It was, yeah, it was cool. I felt really smart. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I've had that with music and some other things. Where I'm like, man, I can, I can remember it, but I'm too tired to like, like I'd wake up and remember something, like a you know some some music. And I'm like, that sounded good. I'm like, I should like figure that out. And then I'm like, I'm too tired. I'll fi- I'll remember <laughs> later. You never remember you never if remember. you don't do anything about it then. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mohegan 9 says, what do you swear you saw but you don't have any proof of? Hmm, like aliens and These stuff like that? These questions are, mm. yeah, these are too revealing. I saw a star. <laughs> yeah. I, saw a I think star. that question's a tough, like that one. Yeah. I saw a star in the sky do a 90 degree, 90 de- 90 degree turn or like a, not a star. It was a, um, yeah. looked like a ship. Something glowing. Just went, mm-hmm. that type of thing yeah. in the sky. I saw a video 
and this was probably in the early 2000s, of a man get sucked through a commercial jet engine. Yeah. And came out okay on the other end. He did not get killed. He was cut up very badly, but did not get killed. He stood up when he got out on the other side. Everybody I've ever told about seeing this video says that is impossible. He'd be chopped to ribbons. Yeah. But I remember seeing this video vid- vividly, and I I don't believe that memory is 100% correct, right? Your memory can mm-hmm. definitely deceive you. But I vividly remember seeing this video. So it's good you're saying it on the internet, because there's a few people saying that they've seen it in chat, that they've seen oh, really? that video. So mm-hmm. that's that's interesting. That's super huh. cool. I mean, it's it, everybody I talk to says it's 100%. Impossible. Hmm. But I saw it. Or I think I saw it. Uh, Julio says... Anybody else got an answer for that one? Nah. No. No. I then I'd have Julio. to explain it, and that's a journey. <laughs> we won't go so there. Angry. Julio saw, says, what's your favorite horror movie? Or if you don't have a favorite horror movie, what's your favorite spooky show or book? Uh, I really oh. like the reanimator from a long time ago. Ah, I remember that, yeah. If we As can like go to pure, books, yeah, that's interesting. Kind of goofy horror, but although I like The mm-hmm. Thing and, mm. um, yeah. I don't really so, want to yeah, go for once. Oh, so a movie that I liked, that I, I don't know if a lot of people really liked it, but I actually thought it was kind of good, was Sinister. Um, it's about a, like, creepy creature that kind of takes over kids and then the kids kill their parents and they record video of it. Whoa. Damn. That was that was pretty spoopy, um, mm-hmm. but with manga, uh, anything by Junji Ito is amazing, mm. so good, like so 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 good. If no one's read it, you should because it's amazing. So yeah, and if anything by him is is always amazing. I usually don't like horror stuff; it's just not my thing. But I tend to I'll get on board if you've got a interesting story. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you can if you can hook me enough in like the first five minutes that I'll put up with the fact that this is a horror movie to see where this is going. Uh, you can get me Cabin Fever. I think was is what it was called. Was that one the one where there was like a control room that was controlling a haunted house? Does anybody it, remember that? Doesn't remember. ring a bell. I do. I, I, that one was really good. Um, but yeah, most horror stuff just. <laughs> find to be a, <laughs> just reminded me of my favorite movie cabin in the woods thank you cabin in the woods oh yeah cabin in the woods oh yeah, yeah. my favorite is hand job cabin you can go to hand job <laughs> cabin you can go to youtube <laughs> and check yeah. out the trailer nope <laughs> it is an actual thing on youtube and it's hilarious <laughs> not googling that uh if you go to youtube fran i can guarantee it 100 percent. highly safe, recommend safe this. search it's All a right. safe search yeah. <clears throat> And it's it, not going to be on the terabyte hard drive then. It's not. No, 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 no <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> it is it's, definitely worth finding. It's highly, hilarious. Yeah, because highly recommend to be watching fair, that trailer. On YouTube, there's still some crazy stuff. Like the yeah, this is video this is seen it. comedy. Mm-hmm. This is this is fantastic. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last question of the night. Yeah. Alphonse, what, what secret conspiracy you would you like to start? What? Conspiracy. You know, like a conspiracy theory. Oh. Start one. Hmm. Mm. Uh, what was it? The... That actually, if you jump through a jet engine, that actually you'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Yikes. I take no responsibility for that conspiracy theory, though. Uh, right. That the Earth is a pita. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. There's a hollow inside, but it's shaped like a pita. Yeah. Mm. yeah, makes sense. It's where all the mountains would come from. Bingo. A little bumpy. It's a pita. Mm-hmm. Fran wears a wig. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Toupee. A toupee. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's already a command in my chat. Somebody found like this uh, pompadour like hairstyle thing you can attach, and it's a. If you go to my it chat, called the Fran. And, and exclamation hair. It sends you to some Amazon like toupee pompadour thing you can get that looks pretty real, actually. So people are actually maybe convinced. I would I was like, maybe it is. I don't know. I was pretty good though. <laughs> Epstein killed himself. <laughs> Anybody else? We done? 
<laughs> Call it oh. a wrap. Yeah. Kate is alive. Oh, Kate okay. Kate is alive. Nice. Something, I like that mm. one. Uh, I like oh, it. Oh, man. You just blew my mind. I like yep. the conspiracy that Fran is taking us on an all-inclusive trip to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see the new uh, Star Wars exhibit. The Disney Fran. It's going to be great. Yeah, I bet. Thanks, Star Fran. Wars land. I know you're stoked. Right after that full meal at Portillo's, man. Like, Yeah. You're the best, Fran. Fran, you're hooking it up. Man. <laughs> guy. I appreciate I'm a it. a good friend. Yeah. <laughs> great. All right. Is that the show? I think so. All right. Well, thank you very you much for watching, guys. Good. That's episode 161 in the the bag. There is no bag it goes yeah. into, but we can call in it in the, the bag. Into the trash liner. Into the yeah. trash liner it goes. <laughs> yes. Uh, shout out to everyone watching, whether you're live or on YouTube or on the podcast syndication and all that stuff. Really appreciate the uh, the support across the board, guys. Chevy, where can people find hey. more of you, man, on your socials and on the internet and all that? Heck yeah. Twitter or Twitch, uh, just at A it Chevy, A Y Y, it's Chevy. Um, and then occasionally I upload stuff on YouTube, uh, Chevy YT. Nice. That's pretty simple. Fran? Nice. Uh, I'm FM3 underscore right here on Twitch. So it should be easy to find me if you just type in FM3, actually. What? Uh, I am S5000 Watch. You can catch me playing a lot of Death Stranding starting tomorrow morning early. I want to play 10 hours at least. <laughs> Oh, I love the attitude. <laughs> I, I gotta go see my drug dealer before I can start playing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just search for Miss Five Thousand Watts on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. See me roaming the lands alone and lonely in rain. Nice. And having a frantic Fran panic. <laughs> Fran panic. <laughs> frantic. <laughs> Briar. Uh, I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me at the Briar Rabbit on Twitter. Um, or uh, visiting my drug dealer to play Death Stranding tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> Speaking of Death Stranding, I'll be streaming it as well. I'm actually very excited to play that game. I know it's not going to be for everyone, but it's uh, it just has an angle that I'm excited to experience as a game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll be playing yeah. that on twitch.tv forward slash tefty teft. And if you want to talk to me on Twitter, at teft, T-E-F-T, on Twitter as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Appreciate all the support. We will see you next week for another show. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>